Andy fucking Cruz, what up? <gasps> what up, dude? Jed, been a long time. It's been a long time. I know, we've just been, we were like, we're supposed to start this podcast like an hour ago, and then it's like, oh, we're <laughs> yeah, <laughs> been bullshitting, like gossip not usable for content. Like stuff that we can't say yeah, yeah. publicly. <laughs> right. <laughs> just like 45 minutes, like, oh yeah, we probably should actually do this podcast. Like, oh wait, we're not recording, are we? Like, you're leaning into the mic, like, wait, hold on. <laughs> that is such fucking force of habit. It's just like, oh, no, yeah. yeah. I do that too, though. I'm like, oh, let me just, no. Yeah, no, we yeah. both have had cans on this whole time, nothing recording, <laughs> just like leaning into the mic. I had the headphones on this whole time, and I'm like, maybe we should start, we should push record. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably should actually like generate some content for the, you know, the podcast. <laughs> oh man, what the fuck's been going on? Dude, I'm fucking dead dude like i'm mid midterms were just uh this past week spring break starts next week well, i keep forgetting it's thursday so yeah like couple, in a couple of days spring break happens um mid semester i just my public speaking class um was like accelerated i made the mistake of not realizing that i signed up for a class that was only half the semester i don't know how that like i overlooked that fact but i was like why do i keep having to do a speech a week because it's like, that's kind of insane. Like, you want me to prepare, do research, write an outline, do this, that, and the other thing. And then, like, every once a week. And then it dawned on me. I was like, oh, my God, the semester ends this week because it's an accelerated half the semester only week. Fucking idiot. But I aced the, I aced the fucking class, so I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> I had fun doing it. But, like, it stressed me out so much to the point where my boyfriend was like, you literally prepare for these speeches like as if you're getting ready to do a TED talk. He's like, I guarantee you your classmates probably spend 15 minutes on their fucking speeches while you're over here spending eight hours trying to like get your shit together. And I'm like, I can't help it. I'm a perfectionist, man. I can't help it. I well, help it. on top of it, you have a fucking career of public speaking behind you. Like, oh, hey, I have a serious XM show. I'm going to just phone this in. Yeah. Like, I, there's just something about it where I was like, I had like, Whenever I would prepare for my speeches to, to for delivery, I would like sit there. I would memorize my shit because, you know, like the professor, he's like, you're for like certain speeches. We weren't allowed to use note cards. And then as we got to like the bigger speeches towards the end, he was like, um, you're allowed to use note cards. But like me being, you know, being me, I was like, I want to fucking use note cards. That's for amateurs. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like I'm I'm like sitting there making sure that I memorize all the main points. And, you know, and, and with this class, you have to like do citation, verbal citations. And like, for, like, for example, my last speech was a persuasive speech. And my topic that I chose was violence in video games and how it's not the problem because it's not. And um. We had to cite orally cite like eight references and like two had to be like scholarly journals. So it's like to remember the names of each article and like the year it was published is it's just so it's too much. You know what I mean? But I I managed to handle it. But I don't know. There's just something about like I when it comes to this kind of stuff, I feel like I have like a reputation to uphold, even though like who knows? I don't think my professor knows who I am. So it's like, I just want to like be the best that I can be. And then in doing so, I like waste an entire day just trying to prepare for the actual speech itself. But it was worth it in the end because I got an A in the class. So <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm just glad it's over because I, as much as I enjoyed like the preparation and just the process and doing everything, um, and also watching like my classmates speeches and stuff. Um, I really like, I'm just, I'm glad that it's over because now I don't have to stress out anymore and I have to worry about like, what topic am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do that shit. Like, As, even though I, you know, I do a weekly podcast, but the idea of like coming up with a fucking weekly speech, like, eh, no, yeah, no, 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 that was the tough part for me. Cause it was like literally back to back. It was like one week. I remembered I had to I had to memorize a monologue because and it could could have been from anything like a, a real speech in history a speech from a movie a scene from a movie whatever I chose um the great dictator dictator great bleh, great dictator Charlie Chaplin and um and that's a really hard monologue I don't know if anybody that's listening and or watching has like seen the movie it's an old film you know Charlie Chaplin I think it was like his first speak only speaking role in a film. And um, that shit was fucking hard. And I memorized it in one night. But <laughs> the very next week, I had to do another speech. And I was just like, dude, it's like one thing after another. I did one topic on on fetishes because I was like, oh, this will be easy. I can fucking do this speech in my sleep. But then I realized, wait, I have to, I have to actually like do research and cite research 
<laughs> like that I've done. So then that was where the hard part came in where I was like, well, I know this stuff, but then now I have to actually look this shit up. This is so stupid. Like you actually have to prove what you know. Yeah. Like I'm like, I got to like validate what I'm saying. <laughs> See, that's why podcasting is so much better. We don't have to validate anything. No, you can literally just say whatever, man. Like, oh, uh, but you know, whatever. It was fun. I'm just glad it's over. I'm just glad it's over. Congratulations on the A. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My teacher even like he... He invited me to um, to join the speech team. I didn't know that was a thing. Did you know that was a thing? Oh, yeah. I didn't fucking know that was a thing. He was like, I would be wrong in not like relaying this invitation to you, but I really, really think you should join the speech team. And I'm like, oh, that's a thing. It's one of the one of those things that stereotypically make fun of nerds for in like every nerd jock movie. Like, yeah. And then like, nerds. and then I saw a video because he had posted something like in our like with all our class stuff online and I was like this must have been what he was talking about and I literally was all like I could do that but then I was I had to stop myself I was like no that's that's gonna stress me out too much that's gonna stress me out too much I, I, I think it could be fun but I'm so competitive that I was like I'm gonna kill myself if I do that so just I'm gonna know. yeah you're in full-time school you're yeah. working full-time you're trying to have a social life why would you even think about yeah. doing that? It's, like, I understand doing speech team in fucking high school when it looks good to, for your college education. Right, yeah. You're not trying to go get your doctorate. Yeah, and I feel like for this, it would be like, it would be it would be something to do if I was really, really bored. Like, I don't have anything else to do. Let's just, let's, 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 let's just join the speech. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. I feel like there's better uses of your time. Yeah. Than yeah. joining the speech team. True, true. Could you imagine though? Because it'd be really funny. That'd be really, really funny. I It'd be like. funny. I'd hey guys, come to my speech. I mean, what do you? What do they call that? A speech meet? Is it a, a competition? What do you? I guess. Like, I feel like. Yeah, hey guys, come check me out. My speech meet or speech. I don't know what else you would call it. Like, like a. Uh, I have no idea. I have no fucking idea. But that. Would, I, I don't know. That'd be fucking hilarious, though. It's an oratory, apparently. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> well, it's a it's a individual event for speech, apparently. Oh, interesting. According to a quick Google search. So I guess like if you're on a team, then you have to like kind of individually, obviously like go up and do. I mean, there was one thing we did learn how to do that like really stressed me the fuck out. Um, You know, you know what an impromptu speech is? I feel like I know what those two words mean. Yeah. So, ba so basically, and like, and this is where I've discovered what the speech, like one of the things that like the, the speech competitions that the speech team does. So... Literally, you have 90 seconds to prepare for a three to five minute speech and you have to choose from three quotations. So like, for example, when I had to do my impromptu speech, one of the quotes, well, they literally used Yoda. OK, it's like do or do not. There is no try Yoda. But then there was you miss 100 percent of all the shots that you don't take. You know, um, uh, what's his name? Wayne Gretzky. Right. right. And um you literally have 90 seconds to choose a quotation, define what the quotation meets, means to you, whether or not you agree with the definition, and then you have to use three examples that go with your definition of, um, of the quote. 90 seconds to prepare. So, like, I was terrified to do this like i like the whole time in my in my in my public speaking class i was like oh this is such a breeze and then we're like oh we're gonna do impromptu speeches i was like fuck this is where i'm gonna fucking fail but then when i actually did it it was like no big deal i was like oh that was really fucking easy but good god man like well i can totally imagine how that's nerve-wracking but that also should be super easy for you you're an on-air personality like <laughs> You literally have to react to things and riff on them. Yeah. And like, and, and that's where I like get really self-conscious because I'm like, I'm not really good at improv. I'm not good at, you know, but then when, when it came to time to do it, I even asked my boyfriend, I was like, I, I like, how do I do this? Like, can you help me? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And then, um, and then when it came time to do it, I like, I, yeah, I fucking crushed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that, that is the skill set of this job, Chris. Yeah, like, that I, is, know. That is I know, I know. There was, I had so much, like, like so much, I don't want to say insecurities. I was just very, I was very determined to like do well. And every time I would wait, await for my grade, I would always stress out like, oh my God, what if my, what, what if nobody liked it? Because you know, my peers get to make comments on my speeches as well. Oh, there's a real life comment section. Fuck that. Oh, there's a real life comment section, dude, because I had, I had my peers, um, commenting on how like, oh, she's so animated when she speaks. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> talking about like, oh, and her use of hand, because I gesticulate a lot when yeah. I speak, but I do it appropriately, you know, when appropriate. So like- Appropriately. Appropriately. And so a lot of times, a lot of times people would comment on not just like my my inflection, which is what you're supposed to kind of comment right. on. Well, how did you feel about your classmate's speech with their use of tone and da, da, da. A lot of times everybody would say similar things. And I was like, oh, her hand gestures were fine and her tone and blah, 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 you know, so... It was it was a good time, but I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah, you you're a better person than me. I no 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 yeah. no couldn't do it. Yeah. Could not do it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now now I'm like easy writing. The rest of the semester I'm like okay, I can focus on the other stuff, but not be so stressed out. Yeah, that, that sounds absolute nerve wracking because it's just one of those things where like even though you use that muscle regularly to the way they're. Mm -hmm. Having you implement it is like, oh, that's a completely different form. Yeah. And it makes me like even more self-conscious because I like because my professor knew that I had like, you know, you, of course, you have to do the whole way to do like a whole introductory type thing, you know, in the beginning of the semester in class and whatnot. And of course, I mentioned like, yeah, I did talk radio for eight years. And then and then, of course, there's the comments of like, oh, well, your voice sounds like you did radio. I'm like, oh, does it sound is this my radio voice? You know what I mean? And um, and uh and it's just interesting to like, especially with my professor commenting on like, oh, well, you know, I can tell that you kind of have that voice, that presence. But also if, you know, whatever you because he knows that I don't do radio anymore. So he was like one of his latest comments on um, like after creating my last uh, speeches, he was just like, I hope that you don't waste this talent and like do something with it later on. And I'm like, oh, don't don't you worry. I will. <laughs> I will. Yeah, you'll go back to radio. I'll probably go. I'll probably go back to radio and probably do a podcast eventually. Eventually, if I have eventually. To find the time. <laughs> it's amazing how many people do not realize how much work goes into these fucking things. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. Like when certain people are like, "Oh yeah, can we?" There's so many fucking people, and I'm, when I say so many, I'm talking like, I think right now I've had maybe four different people approach me about either doing a podcast with them or helping them do a podcast. And a lot of times it's in the majority of the time, I should say, it's always like, oh yeah, so do I just show up and like, who's gonna edit this shit? And I'm like, oh yeah, so there's that. Um, hey, give them my card. I, if they're paying, I'll do it. No, well, I mean like <laughs> like the ones that wanted to do one with me and I'm, which I'm totally open to if I eventually have, you know, like the, the breathing room to do it again, which I'm sure I will eventually, but it's like, I think about that and then I'm like, oh, I forgot. There's also that. And while I'm capable, I don't even have time to even do one. But if even if I did have time to do one, it's like people really don't realize that how much effort, it's not just speaking into a mic and being like, well, let's just upload it. And you'd be surprised. I mean, maybe you're not surprised. I'm sure a lot of people come to you about this just as much me. But a lot of times people really don't realize that like, no, dude, you have to edit this shit. You can't just upload it as is. And granted, I've listened to some podcasts where I'm like, who the fuck edited this, dude? Like, did you just upload it? Like, and there are people that have just literally just uploaded as is. You hear the beginning where it's like, you should have cut the first five minutes out. Yeah, yeah. And so people are just like, I'm recording it from my phone and directed to the oh, internet it goes. Oh, that's the worst, dude. Uh, no comment. <laughs> Yeah. It's a hard job, but somebody's got to do it. See, that, that's the nice part about being my co-host. I do all that shit. You, yeah, You got exactly. to just show up and record. Yeah. Just beat the exactly. shit out of your liver. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't drink anymore, man. I can't. I cannot. I, okay. So, um, I know we spoke about this briefly earlier, but I'm just going to say it on air. I, um, so like, I'm sure anybody that knows me, you included, has th th are very familiar with the way I get when I do drink, okay? Like, I can be either a hot mess or an even hot hotter mess. I mean, we have hours of documented proof. Yeah, this, this is also true. This is true. <laughs> um, so, like, you know, like, in the, I would say in the last four years, I've, like, sl tremendously slowed down on the drinking. Now, I don't like saying I'm sober because I'm not. Like, yeah. I'll have a glass of wine at dinner. I'll... I'll have like a cocktail when I'm out socially with friends and granted, you know, we've been in a pandemic. So it's like, I haven't really been out, out, but like since stuff has slowly been opening back up, yeah, I've, I've gone out and we actually went to a play, um, uh, got probably like two week weekends ago now, I think. 
Um, Brian Cranston. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called um, uh, what was it called? Something sail beyond the sail. Death of a salesman. Something no something sail like a boat sail. Well, at any rate, um, went and saw that at the Geffen. And we were with a group of our friends and we decided, um, oh, there's this dive bar. Okay, this is fucked up because you know where the Geffen is. It's like over by UCLA yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So we we decide to go to this um, <laughs> this dive bar that our other friends, when they had gotten to the theater earlier, they're like, oh, we'll have a drink and a sandwich or whatever at this bar. Because in the daytime, it's like a restaurant, you know, like bar, I mean, bar food, but like they're open kind of like a restaurant. And it just looks like that, right? By the time we left the play and got to the bar, it's like, I don't know, like 10 p.m. It looked like a fucking nightclub, dude. Like, there, there's like ropes. So I go, you have to go around. I'm like, what? We get in there. And it's all these college kids. Now, mind you, me and my friends, we're like all in our 30s, <laughs> like late 30s, the majority of us. So we're like at a booth sitting in a corner. I'm actually having a cocktail. This is the first time I've had a bourbon and ginger in God knows how fucking long. Because I was like, we were all kind of getting kind of saucy. So we were like, yeah, let's let's drink. So I had suggested shots. But then, you know, my boyfriend was like, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> so which was probably smart. So we're in the booth sitting in the corner. And th these had to have been like 21. I mean, obviously 21 year olds, but they look they, OK. Kids today. 21 year olds look like children. They look like they're fucking 12, dude, because literally we're sitting there and we're people watching. And I'm like that girl over there. Legit looks like she's 12. Am I wrong? And everybody's just like, she looks like she's underage. Well, but, one, she possibly is. Like, did you not have a fake in college? I mean, okay, so. I don't think they can prosecute you for it at this point. I did have a fake in college, yes. I was 19. And I mean, back then I looked really young. But this chick legitimately looked like she was 12. I don't think she was legitimately 12, but very passable to be like if she wanted to be an actress in a movie she could pass for a 12 year old i mean we're also old crews we're this is, old this is true and me and my friends were saying the same thing we were like are we just old like what is happening and and they're like there's this one chick's like on top of the table and i'm like oh i remember those days i'm like thinking to myself i remember those times can't do that again and one of my girlfriends that was with us she was like she was pretty drunk Wine drunk, okay? If there's, you know how wine drunk is a little different than... A little sleepy. It's a little, it's a little different. So she was like wine drunk, but like happy. And she's like, let's go dance. Like, I'm like, with them? <laughs> like, you know, all these college kids just kind of dancing and like running amok. I was like, if we're going to do this, I need another drink because I had already pounded my first drink. So I'm already kind of like, ooh. <laughs> so we go to the bar and I grab another drink. By the time I get back... My girlfriend that's wine drunk, she's like, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm like, what the fuck? I just got another drink because I thought we were about to like get Liddy over here. What are, What is it? The thing the cool, the cool, the young kids are saying nowadays. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I, I thought we were, I thought we were going to like, like keep drinking. So she leaves with, with her date. So now our other friend, um, him and his girlfriend are with us and, um, and we're just having a good time. So I'm like, well, I have to drink this drink. But then I got up and I almost spilled something and I started acting kind of frisky with my boyfriend and he was just like, all right, if this goes on for five minutes longer, this is going to get really messy. So he was like, you know what, guys, why don't, why don't we leave? So let me finish my drink. So I like pounded it, nearly spilled it, pounding it. And then we ended up leaving and then that was pretty much it. I, I yeah, I, two drinks, Slayer. Two, two drinks. Who have I become? Who am I? I was like, what the fuck? Gone are the days when I could literally do like fucking six consecutive shots and be fine. Oh yeah, go back to the old, go back to the old audio. There is a lot of drinking that could happen between the two of us in, on episodes. And don't get me wrong, in the, the older episodes, there were some, some days where I was pretty drunk and you knew it. Oh, there is a couple episodes you showed up drunk. Yeah, where I showed, yeah, that's my point. So like, <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm just like, Man, after two fucking drinks, I was like, wow. And then the next day, like, I think I had, I think I got up at like six in the morning and I was like, ooh, headache. So I like took something from medic and went back to sleep and then I was fine. But like, oh my God, dude, I was like, I can't. When you, I remember when we were scheduling this, you're like, so what do you, what, what are you, are you drinking? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Cause if I drink even one drink, I know that I'm going to be like, well, I guess I'll Uber home. <laughs> Cause. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. that's why, like, it wasn't a question of, like, what are you drinking? It's like, are you drinking? Are you drink yeah. yeah. 
And it's like, I, I like to drink every once in a while. But like after I was like, OK, it's been two weeks. Maybe give me another week and then I'll be ready to drink again. But <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> Good times. Oh, Good yeah. Times. Yeah. Well, yeah. You have any college kids hitting on you while you're out there? No. I, I purposely was like, I'm just going to go. We were literally in the corner. We were literally sitting in a well, dark booth in the corner. You had to go get a drink. You know? Went to go get a drink. And then I can't remember what happened. I think so I think someone was trying to talk to my buddy's girlfriend is what happened. And then and I was just I was just on the verge of being sloppy. And then it was like, it's time to go. Let's just leave. Let's just fucking go before this gets before this gets ugly. Or you tell some 21-year-old what you really think of them. And how I know that things were about to get ugly. Actually, this was like after we got home because we ended up ordering food. And then, um, you know, I've been vegetarian for like a very, very, very long time, right? And he had gotten, my boyfriend had got a chicken sandwich and a burger. And I had gotten like an impossible like vegan burger. And he told me this the next day. He's like, you've been vegetarian for like 15 years. And last night, you literally were like, give me a bite out of that chicken sandwich. And he's like, what? No, I'm not fucking giving you. And I, get, and I was like, and I kind of remember this too, where I was like, give me a bite of your fucking sandwich. Just let me have a bite. I just want a bite. I mean, that's dangerous that he said no. Does does he not know who you are? <laughs> I was like, I was like, give me a bite. He's like, no, I'm not going to give you a bite of mine. I was like, come on, just give me one bite. He's like, no. So oh. I didn't get a bite out of that sandwich. <laughs> That man, that man took his life into his own hands. Like, yeah. He was like, I'm not giving you a bite out of my sandwich. And I was like, okay. Like, if I yeah. if I encountered a drunk cruise in the wild, I was like, give me a bite of your chicken sandwich. Yeah, just take it. Yep. It's yours. It's yours. I don't want to be choked unconscious. It's I, yours. I think I was way too drunk to even, like, pay attention. But, I, I like, I think at that point I was just like, whatever. Because I don't even remember passing out. And then the next day he's like, you tried to you tried to eat my chicken sandwich. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, God. Vegetarians are vegetarians until they're drunk. You know what? That is so funny that you say that. Because, like, it's like even when I used to drink, right? Like, when I used to get fucked up, I don't ever remember really doing that. I think it's just been so long since I've drank that, and also equally as long <laughs> since I've had meat that I was just, like, on one. I was just like, give me a bite of your chicken sandwich. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I'm, it's like, okay, cruise is crazy. <laughs> You're not the only one I years ago was out with a couple of, you know, industry friends and one of them was, you know, a devout vegetarian and, you know, post bar, we hit a fucking like 24 hour drive through. Right. And, you know, just threw the bag in the back because I was driving. And when I went to grab my food, like I'm down a cheeseburger and I'm fucking losing my shit because I think the fucking drive through shorted me a cheeseburger. I found out a couple of days later, my vegetarian drunk friend in the backseat, her ass ate my cheeseburger and didn't say shit. I'm trying to remember because I heard a similar story. I'm trying to remember where I heard this fucking story because I feel like just that comment alone, you know, like, oh, vegetarians are vegetarian until they're drunk. I heard a similar story where someone was like, yeah, my girlfriend was all like, I'm just I just want to. Oh, wait, it was from uh, a friend of ours. She was talking about how um, her friend got really wasted and was like. They, I guess they went to some diner or something similar, went to a diner or something and was like, I'm going to order a steak. And I guess she did order a steak and then got sick. And I was like, yeah, because if you it, like, it's also depending on like how long she has been meat free. When you just dive right into like a, something like a steak, you're going to get sick. But yeah, your body doesn't know how to break it down. Anymore. Yeah. And she was like, she's like, yeah, she was really fucking wasted. I tried to stop her, but she was like, I'm getting a fucking steak. Fuck that. <laughs> That was me with that chicken sandwich. Give me that chicken sandwich. Which is so weird because like, like, don't really, even when I did eat meat, you know, didn't really care too much for chicken, you know? So it's like such an odd thing to be like, I just, I just want to. Was it grilled? Was sandwich. it fried? It was like a fried. I think, oh, that's, yeah, what, yeah. I think that's what it was. Because yeah. it was a fried crispy chicken sandwich. Yeah, you're just like, oh, that'll be delicious. And yeah. I'm like, that sounds so so good right now. Like, so. Oh, a little greasy, a little crunch. And the oh. crunch. Yeah. I'm such a texture person when it comes to food. Like, I like crispy things. And yeah, that's probably what it was. Oh, yeah. Crispy fried chicken is a fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I feel so bad for these people who are like, oh, well, I'm getting vegan, you know, crispy fried chicken. Like, I have to tell you, though, because I just had, because of my cravings, <laughs> I ended up ordering. I don't know if you're familiar with Doomies. Oh, uh, of course I'm. Yeah. That place is bomb. And like, they're, they have a, because, you know, there's so many different, you know, like Veggie Grill. There's so many, all these different like vegan veg slash vegetarian like restaurants in LA. 
And a lot of times when you eat their chicken anything, especially when it's supposed to be fried, right? Anything chicken, it just doesn't taste right. You know, like it just has like a, like this doesn't taste like real chicken, chicken kind of feel. This tastes very processed, if that makes sense. And uh, but probably because it is. Well, yeah, but you know, it's the flavor. You know what I mean? Like, it's like this doesn't taste good. Like, like veggie grill. I love veggie grill, but their chicken sandwiches are hit or miss. Like you, you bite into one, and sometimes it's like, oh, this just doesn't taste right. And so, um, but Doomies though. They, they're like they're I think they're like they call it their number one fucking sandwich for a reason because it's like not only is it like yummy but it's like thick it's like this big ass bigger than a Big Mac fucking vegan crispy chicken sandwich but it actually tastes good so I got me one of those after the whole incident, debacle the debacle I was like I'm gonna get myself a Doomies vegan chicken sandwich because I'm in the mood for something crispy and and, and I hadn't had Doomies in forever so I was like I don't even remember what the fuck this shit tastes like but I was like very very pleased very pleased. I still have not actually eaten at Doomies. I've heard nothing but good things. A friend of mine did, believe it or not, there's photographic proof of this, dragged me to Monty's on multiple occasions. Monty's is good, though. The oh, burger no, no, joint? It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, but come on. Dragging me to a vegan spot? Dragging me to a vegan spot. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. It's true. She's like, it's good. I promise. I'm buying. I'm like, fine. But did you like it, though? Yeah, it's fine. It was good. You're mm-hmm. like, it was all right. <laughs> like, I still prefer my a meals. real beef. Yeah, real. Yeah, I prefer my meals to have had hopes and dreams. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, had parents and a face. Oh my god! It's so fucked up because, like, you know, I've been with my boyfriend for like four years, and like, he's not vegetarian. And like, you know, a lot of people think that's weird, you know, like, oh, like. Only if you're weirdly militant about like, you got to brush your teeth after you eat meat or something. No, and I'm not like that, though. You know how some people are like, oh, like people are even very weird about like this has been cooked in the same kitchen or whatever. I mean, people have their beliefs. I'm not going to I'm not going to I take that back. I'm not going to hate on that. But point being, but I'm it doesn't not work like, in a relationship. I, yeah. And I'm not like that, though. Like I've cooked meat for him. I just don't I just choose not to eat it because that's on me. You know what I mean? But I'll I've cooked him meat. I just can't taste test when I cook. For him, so I'm like, hey, come taste this real quick. You know, like, is this meat look like? No, but yeah, like, um, like it's been fine. And like, I've even fed him. He's allowed me to cook like vegetarian meals because I'm not vegan. Like, this is the one thing that bothers me is that like a lot of people are, oh, are you vegan? And like, I'm not vegan. I'm vegetarian. Yeah, you can't give up cheese. Yeah, like I love cheese way too fucking much. Now, now, granted, I don't. I've never been a fan of dairy, like milk. Like growing up as a child, I hated the taste of milk. Like. The, the the closest to milk you'll ever have have me eating is if I'm eating cereal when I was a kid, that is. Right. Um, milk for me has always been either one of three ways. Delivery system for cereal, part of a milkshake. Right. Or someone to dunk cookies in. Exactly. That you know what's funny? When I was a kid, I would only I would I would get a full glass of fucking milk and I would dip my Oreo cookies in it, but then I would waste the glass of milk because I was like, Well, I'm not gonna drink it. So right, right, same. Fucking same. Yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna fucking drink it. So um, so yeah, like I, so I'm not, I'm not vegan. I'm vegetarian. I, the only dairy I really do is, is fucking cheese. And I did the whole vegan thing for like the first six months when I went meat free. And this is grand, like 15 years ago, dude. And, um, and I was like, I, a doctor had told me like, oh, you should at least incorporate eggs. So I was like, okay. So I eat eggs and I eat cheese. That's pretty much the extent of, you know, that goes. But, um, but yeah, so like I, I've cooked a couple of vegetarian dishes for him and, um, and he's loved it. He likes it. He'll eat it. But you know, he's a man, he needs his meat. So like, I, you know, I, I oblige. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, As you said, not knocking anybody's personal life choices, but Someone who's going to be that militant about it, it ain't going to work out in a relationship with a mediator. Right. It's just, yeah, it's not. It's not. And it's like, I look at my past relationships and I'm like, well, in all honesty, I think in all of my relationships, I've only ever been with one person who is vegetarian as well. And it was the person that I, when I first became vegetarian, became vegetarian with, like we did it together. Like we were both hardcore meat eaters. And then we decided one day, oh, let's just cut out meat one day. And we were together for five years. And then every partner that I had after that was a meat eater, but it never, it was never an issue. It was, I've never had it been, been an issue. So it's always, and I think I'm, I've met other couples that were like that. We're like, oh yeah, like he doesn't eat meat or she doesn't eat meat, but you know, vice versa. Well, dating in LA, a lot of women don't eat meat. A lot, a lot. Unless it's in your pants. Well, hey, hey. (laughs) 
but which is just like a difficulty for me on dating because it's like but I want to take you out for Korean barbecue and shabu shabu. <laughs> See, I will say this. When I used to eat meat, Korean barbecue was great. It is Sitting great. Sitting there, may, mm, cooking it yourself and shit. That was always yeah. fun. That was fun. Like, I will say that was fun. Full on dim sum, Korean barbecue, shabu shabu, like all these like Asian fucking cuisine where it's like, oh, there's a bit of a spectacle to this fucking meal. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. all pretty meat heavy. They're all, they, yeah, because I remember, I remember when, when someone, one of my friends wanted to go to Korean barbecue many, 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 many years ago. And I was like, well, they might have something for me, maybe. And then like, no. Kimchi, that's about it. <laughs> which, which has fish in it. <laughs> oh my God. How do I not know that? Oh yeah. There's, there's fish. How do I not know there's, that? There's fish broth. I mean, I've had vegan kimchi, but like, I, I didn't, I never realized. That's why they have to specify that it's vegan Yeah. Kimchi. I never realized it had like, oh my God. Yeah. It is a uh, fish broth in it. Oh, it's the broth. Yeah. Okay. Some, not like actually chunks of fish, but yeah, yeah I'm it's like, still made oh, in a fish it's broth. broth. Eh, whatever. <laughs> fish juice is okay. I have a girlfriend who like she was this type of vegetarian. Go get ramen, right? And then we order our ramen, and then they're like, "Oh, um, if you want this specific ramen, it's made from pork broth, and like it comes with a piece of uh, of uh, like meat, like pork. the pork belly, usually." Yeah. And I remembered this was weird because I remembered specifically when this was in like little Tokyo, you know, in downtown. And I remembered she couldn't like modify the dish for some reason. I can't remember why. So when they brought the dish to her, she's like, no, it's fine. I'll just take the meat out. So she that was the type of vegetarian she was. She was like, oh, there's pork broth. Don't care. She's like, I'll just take the meat out. And she would literally it was like a slab of fucking meat. And she would just take it out. And then she would eat the the thing. She was she was like, oh, it's fine. That's my favorite kind of vegetarian because yeah. I get the pork belly that way. Yeah. It's like, oh, here, you take it. <laughs> like, Thanks, babe. Love you. <laughs> yeah. You got like the very strict, strict, like strict vegan. Like, oh, what is this? Uh, like, you know, you go to a Mexican restaurant. And they're like, um, is this a Spanish rice cooked in uh, meat? Yeah, is it cooked in lard? Yeah, is it- like, is it cooked in lard? Yes, it is. Okay, well, I don't want it. Um. <laughs> well, I, I guess that part of that is based on why you're a vegetarian vegan. Well, no, because there's ethical, there's ethical veganism and vegetarianism. I mean, I don't know if you, um, there's a, there's an argument there, you know, like, of like, oh, can you be an ethical vegetarian? Yeah, you, of course you can. But like, I mean, you could try to be. You, right. you, have, you have to ignore that, like. Factory farming kills a lot of like ground nesting animals and stuff like that. Yeah. When harvesting grain. So like right. animals are still dying for that bread. No, absolutely. <laughs> so like when you're an ethical vegan, it comes down to a lot of factors other than like what your food is cooked into. It's it also comes down to like things that you own, you know, like animal testing and then like, oh, is this real leather is it versus fake leather and yada, yada. So it's, it's like a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Oh, it but, 100% is. But and but, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I know. You're wearing a leather belt right now. Oh, fuck. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, called out. I'm a terrible person. No, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. And, like, I totally get the people that are like, I just don't like the texture of meat. Like, For me, in all honesty, when I first stopped eating meat, it was a health thing. It was an, a num- for number one. It was a health thing. And then, of course, I've seen the documentaries that made me feel like, ooh, yeah, I never want to eat pork ever again. You know what I mean? And and I and I um, and I do have feelings towards that. But it's not enough. For, like, I feel like a terrible person saying that because I feel like that would make me a poser because then it would be like, well, now I have to get rid of the boots that I'm wearing, this belt that I'm wearing. I have to get rid of half the shit that I have at home. And that just seems like too much work. <laughs> Way too much work. <laughs> Not to sound like an asshole. People are like, God, what a bitch. No, but in all honesty. No, I think factory farming is gross as fuck, too. Yes. I 100% do. Yes. But I caught so much more hate for stabbing that pig in Cuba. Than oh, I, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> than I ever have, like, you know, <laughs> eating bacon. Poor, poor little piggy. <laughs> right. Like, see, I think it's dishonest when people are like, oh, I'll eat that cheeseburger. I'll eat the fuck out of it. And then, like, oh, well, I wouldn't, you know, create my own meat. It doesn't come nicely shrink wrapped in the real world. Yeah. You have to accept yeah. if I'm going to eat meat, that I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. It's true, though. It's very, very true. I got so much more hate for that, though. <laughs> I have people who unfriended me on Facebook over that shit. Oh, my God. Really? Yep. <laughs> people that are still friends with me in real life, like when we see each other, like hugs, drinks, all that fun, unfriended me on Facebook. They're like, you made light of that. I'm like, dude, you've met me. I make light of everything. You know, it's. It, you know what the whole thing is, too, is that I feel like in 2022, 
people are finding anything and everything to be offended by, to be bothered by, just 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 looking for a reason to be bothered by anything and everything. And uh, everyone's so fucking sensitive. And I'm not, and this is this is not about like you and the pig and your friend. You know what I mean? I'm uh, saying. Oh, I know. I, you almost unfriended me over that pig too. I, I get it. Me? No. Oh, fuck you. No. I was like, no, I did not. I'm fucking, did I'm not. fucking, with, I'm fucking with you. I'm just, no, yeah, you, yeah, no. But I'm just saying, and it just it just reminds me of like how sensitive people are that they will unfriend their friends over even like smaller shit than that. You know what I mean? Well, and like. On one hand, I understand. Like, you, you don't want to see a dead pig with blood all over the floor. Yeah. That's understandable. That's understandable. Yeah, that's understandable. Like, that just popped up on your fucking timeline. You don't want to see it. Yeah, like, I didn't want to see that. Because right. <laughs> like, yeah. on most art and content creation, it's like, no one's forcing you to see this. Right, right. So if you're offended by it, stop paying attention to it. Right. So I understand, like, yeah, I posted. Well, I actually didn't even post the picture. My photographer friend who took the pictures and tagged me in it. Oh, he tagged you in it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I allowed yeah. the tag through. Yeah. And, and then I made some jokes. And then you made some jokes and then that offended people. Yeah. Because we can't, because we're not allowed to make jokes anymore. Well, and it was half a joke. I mean, I, it really was kind of a true Okay. Story. I will say this. I will say this. Okay. While, you know, I'm sad for the pig. Okay. I don't know if you making a joke about it should warrant. The type of offense that like, well, I'm just going to unfriend you. You can be offended. You can be like, I didn't really like that. But to go as far as to unfriend you because of it. That's my that's what I mean. Like, I feel like everybody is just. I don't know, man. I'm OK with it. Like, that's your choice. You don't want to see that content. You I would rather. Him and I are still cool in real life. And you're like, I don't want to see that content, so I'm removing my... So, so these people that unfriended you, they're still friends with you. They just were like, well, fuck that. I don't want to see that shit. I'm yeah, gonna we're just disconnected. Okay, see, I totally misread that. I thought that it was like, oh my God, I can't believe he posted posted what he posted. Oh, no, he was just like... I'm done being friends with him. Fuck that guy. I mean, maybe Because some, there are people that have done that. I'm they're sure... Like, fuck you. Yeah. I'm sure there are some people that did, and I just didn't notice. Right, of course. Because <laughs> course. those weren't actually my friends. But yeah, this is like someone who I'm still friends with, like, invited me to a party. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, thought, I, I thought you were meant like... Like, oh my God, no, I'm so you, offended. Dude. Fuck you. I'm No, yeah. no, I mean he definitely was still offended because I talked to him I'm like, hey, do you want to reconnect on Facebook, man? It's been like five years. He's like, Yeah, no. Jesus Christ. No, I'm cool. Wow. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm 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 cool. I'm like I talked to him about like last fourth of July at a yeah. barbecue at his place that he invited me to. Like, so we're gonna reconnect on Facebook, man. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, I'm cool. Wow. Like you, you made a joke about that poor pig. I'm like, all I said is I wish it had quietly gone into the night. <laughs> That's not even that bad. I, and that's on my honest opinion about it. Like, I do, I d that's not even that bad. There's worse things you could have said. Oh, yeah. And like. I mean, describing it in graphic detail probably is a lot worse. I mean, yeah, but still, like, I mean, you could have, there's worse things you could have said. But oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. honestly, that is my honest opinion about the situation. I don't regret stabbing that pig. I regret that I was not able to end its life quickly and painlessly. And that I understand because I feel like. I remembered when that happened and like the fact that it was like, why isn't it dead? Why the fuck is it still alive? Like I would feel bad. Like just fucking end it already. <laughs> yeah. I am just a fucking, end it suffering. A city boy who has never killed a live animal in his life. That is pretty wild though. What? That you had to do that. I didn't have to. I volunteered. I mean, well, you know what I mean? That they're like, oh, this is how we do it out here, man. <laughs> well, here's your dinner. <laughs> well, they were just like, yo, which one of you wants the honor of fucking stabbing the pig for the pig roast? And you're like, I'll do it. I'm like, I'm on it. I'm on it. Like, because of, you know, put up or shut up. I believe that, like, if you're going to eat meat, that you should be honest about where it fucking comes from. Right, 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 right. So I'm not going to fucking be like, no, no, let me know when it's delicious. <laughs> you know, I, I saw that poor bastard, you know, squeal and spray blood and. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, at one point, like, sprayed and kicked blood, and I saw it coming and moved out of the way, and one of my friends ah! got covered. Ah! God. One of my buddies with the camera got, like, fucking pig blood. I'm like, like did you not see that coming? Is that what they used in Carrie? No. I thought it was pig blood. I mean, in the movie, yes, but I think the prop was not actual. No, blood. no, yeah, you're right. I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew that. I was like, but that, uh, that's what I meant. It was what? like, in the movie, it was supposed to be pig blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be really fucked up if they used true pig blood? Oh, that'd be what? Oh, yeah, that'd be horrible. Sissy space act being, why does this smell funny? Well, just imagine it like under stage lights start to coagulate. 
Yeah, like stage lights are hot. Oh, that. Because uh, uh, that's old school, like big ass bulbs, not you know, LEDs. You know what I think is crazier though is how like you hear of all those accidents on farms and how like pigs will legit like eat a person. Oh yeah. Ah. Oh God! Pigs will eat anything. There was this woman. She was like a serial killer. Okay, I can't remember her fucking name. She was like this old broad who lived in a farm, and I remembered she would like hire these guys to work for her. And um, what she would do is she would like like steal from them. I can't fucking remember the details. I don't know why I'm like blanking on the whole story. But the whole point is, when she killed a dude. She wanted to make it look like the pigs did it. So she like threw his corpse to the piggies and the pigs ate almost everything. And like, I think what was left behind was like part of his hand. And that's what the cops found. And they were like, interesting. And it turned out that like, I, I, don't, I can't remember if she like whacked him on the head or what. But like, I just remembered she, she wanted to get rid of the evidence by like letting the pigs get rid of it for her. Well, what came up was we have... um. Woman murders two men and feeds them to her pigs. And this is an what article. year was that? Because I feel like it was like a long time. 2014. Ago. Okay, no, that that's it was like I think it was way before then. Well, there's a dude who killed 49 people in Canada and fed him to his pigs. Oh my god, 49 people. Yep. What was his stick? Like what? What? What, what the fuck? Canadian serial killer Robert Picton was a pig farmer. Based oh in- yeah 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 yeah. Did you say Picton? Mm-hmm. Oh, his farm. I, I know about this guy. Literally look like something out of a horror film. I don't know if you can see pictures, but like it was just like dilapidated and disgusting and all, all the photos are like post like. Oh, yeah. Scene. No, it's disgusting. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh. Yeah. I forgot. That, that was in Canada. Yep. I don't remember that being in Canada. British Columbia. I just remember the name. I was like, yeah, Picton. He, he, the Picton farm. Butchered 49 women on his property. Man, he didn't go 50 and 0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. So close to getting the title. You know what's funny is that I'm I'm almost positive he might have said something about that. Like, oh, I was really pushing for 50. <laughs> I know. I swear to God. I, dude, I, I listen to a lot of crime, like watch a lot of crime stuff. And, you know, like I have like the encyclopedia of serial killers on my bookshelf. Oh, no, it's actually in the article. He disclosed his goal of wanting to murder 50 people. He expressed his ha! disappointment because he came sloppy and missing his target by just one. Told you. I told you. I was like, I'm pretty sure he did make a joke about like trying to hit 50 because it was like 49. And then he made a com- I remember he made a comment, but I couldn't remember. So that's fucking yeah. hilarious. Parallel thinking. I swear I didn't steal his comment. Yeah. I, I <laughs> yeah. didn't steal his bits. I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure he didn't say something. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. He was like so close, but he, he did get sloppy. Man, oof! Yeah, that, that to the pigs. <laughs> oh. It's crazy that pigs will literally eat everything, everything, down like the bones and everything. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Like, ugh, that's that's why it's easy to like if you. I mean, how oh, I don't want to give people ideas at home. <laughs> we live in a very urban environment. I don't think we have to worry about too many pig farms. <laughs> like, oh, if I want to get rid of a body, I could just. Uh, <laughs> Go to a farm that has piggies. But yeah, that one broad who I can't remember her fucking name for the life of me. She, um, yeah, that's what she did. She like killed a bunch of dudes. And then uh, I think the piggies like didn't eat. It's his hand or some shit. (laughs) Though he was only charged with six murders. Yeah, it was like a weird thing because. I mean, evidence and. Everything else that kind of goes along with it. I just know that the farm was fucking disgusting. And they were, yeah, they were like mostly prostitutes, like sex workers that he, um, that oh. were his victims. He injected, injected some of them with antifreeze? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, isn't that disgusting? Yeah. Yeah. Antifreeze. Um, I forgot what else he fucking did, but yeah, he was disgusting. Oh, Jesus. He sold, he minced some of their meat and, yeah. and sold it to people. Yep. Sound familiar? Because I think there's a movie that uh, you you, have you seen that movie Fresh Mm -mm. on Hulu? Okay, so there's this movie called Fresh, and it's got Sebastian Stan in it, and I forgot the name of the the chick that's in it, but um, essentially, it's about a dude who um, uh, kidnaps women, and then he sells their body parts to people that are essentially cannibals. And he'll take some of the meat and turn it into, you know, ground meat. 
<laughs> and other stuff. <laughs> well, one good thing came out of all this. Go on. It led to Canada decriminalizing prostitution in 2010 as part of an effort to make the industry safer. I, I forgot about that. So I forgot about that. Thanks. Yeah, like, okay, U.S., you're next. <laughs> All we need is someone to kill. F- no, 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 because you've got to be another way to do this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Gary Ridgeway, he he. OK, that's uh, the Green River Killer, right? The Green River Killer. He confessed to like, I think I think they said something like it's probably, it's probably his his count was probably closer to 70, but he only got convicted for. um uh Fuck, I forgot how... Do you have it up by any chance? I can't remember how many. I just did a speech about him. Like, what the fuck am I blanking on on the details for here? Once again, his total number of convictions was 49. Yes, 49. No one can hit the big 5-0. But I think he confessed to like 70 or something, or they they suspected it was like 70, but he confessed to more than what he got convicted for. So he got convicted for 49, right? Is that what it says? He got convicted for 49. Um, Because... There's... At least six in his Wikipedia article about suspected. Yeah. And like him, he um his, his victims were all sex workers and it was like near Seattle. And they actually used Ted Bundy to help catch him because this was like in 1980. So, you know, like, you know how he got caught, right? Hmm. So Gary Ridgway, he um it was like 1980 in the 1980s, maybe not even 1980. Exactly. He um uh, he's got a couple that are disappeared in 82. There's one that's possibly 73. But. Yeah. So like he started killing and then he stopped. He got married, right? And he ended up getting married, stopped. And then it's 20. A, it's amazing what the love of a good woman will do for you. Well, it's funny because when they interviewed his wife, she was all like, there were times where he would leave really, 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 really early for work. And then, you know what I mean? And she suspects that, um, he killed some of his vict- some of his victims while they were married, and I think he admitted to that as well. But he didn't get caught till twenty years later because what what ended up happening was something happened. He got arrested, and then they couldn't keep him on anything. But because technology had advanced, they had a sample, and they were, were finally able to connect him to one of the murders. Now, what, the wildest thing that I read in um, there's this book called Green River Running Red by Anne Rule. She used to work um, right next to Ted Bundy when Ted Bundy was doing the, the call center. You know, Anne Rule worked right next to him. That's why she started writing books on like serial killers and stuff, because it was like you literally worked with Ted Bundy at this call center. Like it's fucking wild. And when she wrote the book on the Green River Killer. So the way he his M.O., the way he killed all of his victims <clears throat> was manual strangulation. And in it to him, he enjoyed like facing them when he killed them. He liked looking them in the eye as they died. You know, it's very dark. But one of his victims was Filipino. So where are my fucking fellow flips at? Because I believe this. She was, he talked uh, when he was, um, when he went to court and he was talking about this specific victim, he said that uh, she was one of the only victims that he had that actually fought back. And she happened to be Filipino. And I was like, yeah, because Filipino bitches, you don't fuck with us. <laughs> he said that she fought back. And because she fought back, when he finally killed her, he couldn't look her in the eye. So he flipped her. He was like, she was one of the only victims. He flipped over and strang- strangled her from behind because he couldn't look her in the face because she fought him back. I always thought that was very, very interesting. I was like, damn. But um, yeah, motherfucker got caught way later. And when they asked Ted Bundy for help, Ted Bundy, because he was already in jail, and they and like I think he was even like on death row already at this point. And he said, "I guarantee you, he's revisiting the dump sites to have sex with the corpses." Because you know how Ted Bundy was a necrophiliac. Yeah. He's like, "I guarantee you, this guy is probably doing the same thing." Sure enough, on Ted Bundy's advice, they noticed that he was revisiting. They had evidence, like saw that he was revisiting the um the dump sites, and they saw that like, oh, he's definitely having sex with the corpses. So. Yeesh. Yeah. Ah, yeah that's... Ah. Welcome to and now we true crime. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Talking about pig, we went from pigs to like, oh yeah, there's and serial killers, <laughs> and then now into serial killers that use pigs to fucking kill their to eat their victims, man, and Fuck. just into serial killers, and then just into serial killers. You know, that's how we. Do. Hey, that is how I am <laughs> going to get that twenty-five to forty-year-old female demographic I so desperately need. There you go. You're welcome. No, I'm just... <laughs> 
like not just dudes turning tuning in anymore. <laughs> dudes, I love you. Don't don't leave. Don't leave. But uh, yeah, we need to like defunct the frat house a little yeah. bit. A little bit, a little bit. But yeah, anywho. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pigs. <laughs> well, and, uh, fictionally, like Snatch, the you know, Bricktop. The character Bricktop fed people the pigs and Oh, in the the movie Snatch. Yeah. I was like, wait, I thought we were talking about something completely. No, the, the, that's okay. what I'm like, I thought we were talking about something fiction. else. I was like, <laughs> Mind in the gutter, Cruz. Mind in the gutter. I was like, what? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not everything is about sex, damn I it. I know, I know. You're like, I've been I've been trapped inside for a while. Like, <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you can't take on other people's podcasts. I get it. <laughs> Figured it out. <laughs> Figured it out. See, uh, see. Uh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> oh, shit. Dad. Oh, yeah. No. What's the line? Never trust someone with a pig farm. <laughs> never trust. Yeah. Never trust. Yeah. Especially a woman with a pig. How many times? How many? How many women out there own a pig farm? But you know what? That's kind of a thing, though. There's a lot of women that are like all about that country life. And then it just makes me wonder, like, hmm. You happen to have pigs and a pen. Yeah. And missing ex-boyfriends. And do you have any missing ex-boyfriends? <laughs> that would be wild. I was just about to ask a question, but I was like, maybe we shouldn't talk about that on this podcast. Because that would be, that would be, uh, hmm, raising suspicion. I'm just kidding. Like, who, who? How, how would you get rid of the body? <laughs> Um, pigs are probably the, the way to go i mean the, i honestly cannot think of like after learning about these killers that like utilize the pigs in that way i mean they got caught because they were fucking stupid you know what i mean well it also made a lot of people disappear uh, yeah when that happens and it, and it like points to you like oh you know a lot of folks be uh coming through this town and uh you know uh well but the other difficulty with solving these murders is like when the killer has no connection to the victim, it's a lot harder for the police to figure it out. That's true. That's true. And if you're like someone that, well, I mean, this is more so with like the shit that happened way back in the day with people that would like hop on trains and kind of like hop from town to town. So you, like if they're not from there. Some drifter. Yeah, like some drifter. It's like easier to, because that's usually what happens. Like, oh, he was a drifter, but he was last seen at this farm. <laughs> and then people put two and two together and then they're like, oh. But it's also like that small town America where everybody fucking knew everybody. Also, Yes. The greater majority of Angelinos have no clue who's getting off the bus at the Greyhound station today. This is true. That this is very true. No clue. No. Too big of a city, man. Too right. big of a city. Too big of a city. So if some guy who just floated into town on a Greyhound goes and fucking stabs somebody in downtown LA and then disappears. Disappears. Yeah. Unless they left whopping DNA evidence or have a MO, it's gonna be fucking hard for the police to catch that guy. That's true. That's very true. Also, I feel like like you know, we're we're in an era where like, when was the last time we've ever even heard of a serial killer? Because of the way technology has advanced. Uh, I mean, they just convicted. Um, yeah, I feel like there was something that happened recently, right? Like the uh, I forgot the the dude's name, but he was killing mm -hmm. people in South Central. Oh, that did not know about that. Do tell, please, because I don't remember that hearing about that. But I mean, you know, like back, it was like very prevalent. The Grim Sleeper. It was like, what? Yep. <laughs> okay, who gave him that moniker? <laughs> uh, Lonnie David Franklin Jr., better known by the nickname Grim Sleeper, was an American serial killer responsible for at least 10 murders and one attempted murder in Los Angeles from 1984 to 2007. Oh, wow. Wait, 1984 to 2007? Mm -hmm. And he, ne he only just got caught? Uh, he died in 2020. Wow. He died in, uh, in San Quentin in 2020. Oh, my God. Uh, the 2000s investigation was linked through DNA to 11 unsolved murders that first occurred in 85. Good God, man. The Grim Sleeper. Why was he called the Grim Sleeper? That is an amazing question. Because I feel like, did he kill people while they were sleeping? <laughs> he was given a dishonorable discharge from the army in 75. Wow. After being released from prison for conviction of gang raping a 17-year-old. Oh, my God. Gang raping? Mm-hmm. With two other servicemen. 
Oh, God. Yeah, he's not a good person. No. Oh, no. That's fucked. That's fucked. That's really fucked. Yep. Between 84 and 2007. Yep. But when did he get caught? Was it Did he get caught in 07? Or was it just he committed the murders between 84 um, and 07? They hadn't caught him as of 08. Um, the police gave him the, the nickname Grim Sleeper by, chosen by LA Weekly. <laughs> Some journalist at LA Weekly was all like, let's call him the Grim Sleeper. Yeah. Has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Because I, it prob- I'm probably right, right? Like, this has nothing to do with anything. Um, he was originally dubbed the Southside Slayer. The he was- South Side Slayer? Because mm-hmm. <gasps> he strangled at least sex- 13 sex workers between 83 and 85. Wow. Okay. In, in South Central. So another one whose uh, victims were all sex workers. Yep. Man. Uh, at one point, the murders were colloquially known as the Strawberry Murders. Strawberry being gang slain for women who exchanged sex for drugs. Strawberry. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh yeah. Have you um fucking No, I have not hung out and I'm just kidding. Well no no like, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh the lyrics of fucking Dope Man from NWA mentioned that. Oh no, I never knew that. I never knew that. Strawberry. Yep. Wait, so that was one of his nicknames was Strawberry Slayer? Too? Well, they were known as the Strawberry Murders. Oh, Strawberry Murder, sorry. Strawberry Slayer. That just sounds very uh, yeah. whimsical. <laughs> Strawberry Slayer. <laughs> um, so they call me on weekends. <laughs> no, no, no. Slay, bitch. <laughs> so. But a lot of people weren't paying attention to the murders because this is the Night Stalker was happening around the same time. I was going to say, because the Night Stalker was like, what, 80. Uh, what was that 86, 85? Yep. But by January 86, 15 murders have been linked to the case. And, uh, yeah, the Sheriff's Department investigation would have been known as the Southside Slayer Task Force, but 86, the case was still under investigation. Well, God diggity damn, man. Over the following years, it was found that uh, serial killer Lewis Crane had committed at least two of the Southside Slayer murders. And others, and like three other serial killers had committed at least one of them. So he hadn't killed all of them. Oh my God. So there was a lot of serial killers going on in South Central in the 80s, apparently. Wow. But nothing like as of like past 2010. Um, maybe. Because I feel like you don't really hear, you know what I mean? Like back then it was like very prevalent, like in the 80s, you know, in the 90s, because technology wasn't really there. You couldn't really like, you know. Well, one of the popular theories I've heard is also the lack of lead paint and the lack of fucking leaded gasoline affecting people's mental states. Interesting. I mean. That is interesting. Lead exposure can, you know, do... Make you do wild shit. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's like, I feel like it'd be a lot tougher to get away. You'd have to be like, really... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I mean, like, obviously careful, but like, you know, beyond that. Yeah, you did. In trying to make sure that you don't leave a single fucking trace, dude. Um, uh, lead poisoning systems in adults. Uh, mood disorders, mm. headaches. Oh, from lead. Oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah, lead yeah, poisoning. Yeah, yeah, lead poisoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, high blood pressure, joint muscle pain, difficulties with memory or concentration, headache, abdominal pain, mood disorders, reduced sperm count, and abnormal sperm. Reduced sperm. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like whenever they would like find sperm, they're like, well, hmm, interesting find, but <laughs> yeah, like. I don't know. We're going to Google real quick, folks. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, what are you looking up? Lead exposure and serial killers. Oh, lead. Okay, okay. Like, so combining the two together and we Now, have- Wikipedia pops up with lead crime hip- hypothesis. First thing. Okay, read it. The lead b- crime hi- hypothesis is an association between elevated levels, blood lead levels in children, and increased crime, de- delinquency, and re- uh, redivism late in life. Lit is widely understood to be highly toxic in multiple organs of the body, particularly the brain. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like there's there's a whole fucking, but yeah. That's why like when kids are little and if they like live in a house where like well, there's lead they're paint. exposed to lead paint and then they eat it. Because, you know, kids like to put things in their mouths. Well, disgusting. And then they get sick and you're like, what the fuck's wrong with my child? Oh, well, he's got lead poisoning. <laughs> it's like fucked up. 
so <clears throat> the hypothesis rose out of the uh, confluence of several events, primarily the decrease in crime rates in the 90s and the reduction of environmental lead pollution in the 70s. Okay. After decades of relatively steady increase in crime rates in the United States, started to sharply decline in the 90s. The trend continued into the new millennium. Multiple possible explanations have come out. So there's, you know, multiple reasons. But the fact that the United States anti-lead efforts took place simultaneously along the sides of falls of violent crime attract attention from researchers. Interesting. I wasn't completely crazy when I'm like, I, I, I heard this was a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I, I feel like I've heard of that as well. Especially when, like, you're like, oh, when he was a child, he was exposed to it, so it just messed up his head. <laughs> yeah. He was just eating lead chips, and then you he know, just started was, stabbing and, people. And then, then, it be, then he started killing animals when he was five, and then, like, that's the first telltale sign, first of yep. all. It's like setting animals on fire. Yeah, when kids do that shit. Yeah, it's fucking Did weird. you ever see that horrific fucking documentary on Netflix, um, Don't Fuck With Cats? I did not. I, I'm aware of it. I just never watched it. Yeah, you probably don't want to. <laughs> I was like, what the, f why am I watching this? This is so fucked up, dude. Because you were stuck indoors. And yeah, exactly. And then I was like, well, I don't want to watch it, but I, I can't stop watching it. So I guess here we are. <laughs> it, speaking of violent crime and shit like that, it, it is so crazy that like modern America is so fucking afraid of everything. It's like, you know, the numbers are way fucking down. Right? Yeah. It, it's wild to me. Yeah. Like, I see people like, yeah, L.A. is still pretty fucking wild. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I'm on the Citizen app in Hollywood. It's just like, ooh. Every five seconds, my phone will go off. and like, women, we, a woman wielding a, a fucking hammer or some shit. Like, you know what that means? Usually you're like, okay, it's probably a homeless person in yeah. the middle of the street that found a hammer. My wielding a hammer. One time I got one that said woman wielding a machete. And I was like, where the fuck did she get a machete? <laughs> wielding a machete at, at people like on whatever street. And I'm like, what the fuck? My, my favorite was man wielding machete and exposing himself. That's the best. Because yeah. you're like, that's definitely someone that's living in a tent somewhere on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like, Yeah, exposed himself while wielding a machete. Yeah, not not your normal crime. Good times, LA. Good times. <laughs> but even with like all this hyper-awareness, it's just because how the news cycles are. That you shit know, that wouldn't have made national news is making national news. No, that's that's very true, actually. Like, um, there's just so much, like, I also feel like neighborhoods that weren't very, I guess, like, not used to this type of stuff. Like, okay, for example, like in um, on Sunset, you know, the Bossa Nova that's on Sunset? Yeah. Um, I remember it was, it happened at like two in the morning. I don't know if you saw this because this was like not that long ago, maybe like two months ago or something. But someone was in his car and there, and some dude tried to steal the woman that he was with, her purse. And so the guy got out of the driver's seat, but he also had a gun, the guy in the-, the Oh, I did car. hear about this. But he got shot in the face by the dude that was trying to steal the bag. So I was just like, what the fuck, dude? Staying away from that bossa nova from now on, <laughs> like- It's all anecdotal. It's all yeah, fucking anecdotal. Yeah, no, it's true. It's but true. It's very true. 1990 LA was real rough. No, for sure. So I, I just pulled up the crime rates in Los Angeles County from 85 to 2019. Mm -hmm. Per 100,000 residents in the county, 1181 in 1985 per 100,000. Per 100,000, okay. 2019 was 554. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's a very big difference. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's massive, a, that's a massive. That's a very big difference, yeah. And it's, sadly, on it is on the increase because 2015 or 2014 was 423.1. 4, 2013 was 402.2. So it's up a little bit, but it's not but it's, like... But it's not like 600 or something. Yeah. It's like still kind of in the 400-ish range. I mean, for fuck's sake, 92 was 1815.2. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. No, the 90s were bad. I mean, hell, our the homicide... were pretty bad. Our homicide rate in 92 was 21.3 murders per 100,000. In 92? Mm -hmm. Damn. And our homicides for 19 were five. Per 100,000. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Five? Five per 100,000. That's 100, insane. Yeah. I mean, the numbers talk, man, for sure. I mean, that's still a fair amount of homicides for the county. For sure. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. not like... But not 21, what, yeah, what was four, it? Four times, over four times yeah, the amount. Yeah, because that's like over four times the amount from like 92, you said? Yeah. 92, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. This just reminds me how much I hate my statistics class. <laughs> Like, fucking numbers. Because, like, I hate fucking I mean, like, so my statistics class, like, because that's the, one of the classes I'm taking this semester right now, and it's not accelerated, thank the fucking Christ, it's not. But um, 
it's all about box plots and like, you know, all the like the diagrams and all this shit. And like in the beginning, I was like, this is fucking easy. But now we're like getting into some harder shit where I'm like, I fucking hate this so much. I hate it. I just hate math in general. But like, you know, whatever, I'll make do. (laughs) Gotta get that degree. Gotta get that degree, man. (laughs) What are you even getting your degree in? I don't think I know. I'm studying psychology. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Right? I mean, like, I honestly, when I first started, I was like, not to be a negative Nancy, but I kept thinking to myself, oh, I'll probably end up quitting. You know, like, I know that's very shitty for me to say, but I literally, because all my, my, I have credits from when I was in college almost 20 years ago. You know what I mean? So like I could graduate in fall of 2023. So I'm like, I've gone this far. So I'm like, ah, fuck it. You know what I mean? I kind of want to like get to the end of the road and then come fall 2023, if I decide to take it further and go to grad school or something, I can, but you know, I'm like, I'm having fun with what I'm doing. I'm doing well. It's very weird. I think it's because I've been away from school for so long that it's like something new. So it's like, I'm oddly enjoying it. You know, it's kind of weird where I'm like, oh, I'm actually enjoying school. This is fucking fucked up. (laughs) But, um, so yeah, I'm kind of like seeing it through, man. Cause it's like, you know, but yeah, I'm studying psychology. Uh, my my, I kind of want to have like more of an emphasis in human sexuality because of obvious reasons, you know, working in sex work for as long as I did. And then also having a talk radio show for eight years where I explicitly talked about sex, dating and relationships, almost kind of like further legit- legitimizing and validating things that I already know. Right. And like, you know, I my term paper for my psych one class from last year when I first got back to school was um, I did uh, the psychology of, hum- of uh, sexual behavior. And, you know, discuss like why we do some of the things that we do. So it's like, I feel like, you know, if I'm going to do it, I might as well focus on something specific. So why not that? Right. You know, we need more sex. We need more sex. And we need more people who can confidently talk about sex in a way that like doesn't weird people out. Exactly. Because I feel like that's one of the bigger issues. Either people like I because I've. Don't get me wrong, like doing what I'm doing and studying what I'm studying. I've I've listened to a lot of fucking people do TED Talks, whatever, of um, sexologists or, um, you know, like doctors that specialize in like human sexuality or whatever. And a lot of times I don't agree with a lot of the stuff they put out there because sometimes it's like they want to be right, if this makes any sense. But at the same time, it's almost like. They don't want to say certain things because it might portray them in a certain way, if that makes any sense. They're, they're like, looking about worried about being respectable in their community. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's like they 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 say certain things. Well, I don't. And then I'm like, I don't agree with anything that you're saying right now. So it's like interesting. And after having seen that, it, it's like, no, we need someone that is not going to be PC about anything, but know what they're talking about, but also have no shame. Because my whole thing has always been. You know, I've always been an advocate for sex positivity. And I think the problem is people that are teaching about sex, they, they want to promote the same thing, but it's almost like an oxymoron because they'll promote it. But then at the same time, they'll be like, oh, well, this is wrong. It's like, no, it's not. You think it's wrong because you don't you're you either are ashamed to admit that you don't think it's wrong or you're afraid of what people are going to think of you if you say that it's not wrong. Right. And, you know, the the problem is also how wildly different sex education happens in America. Oh, absolutely. I I mean, one of my speeches, I almost did the topic on sex education in America specifically, but I was like, I don't know if I want to talk about that in a speech. I, and plus all my, a lot of my other topics had been about sex. So I was like, maybe I'll just talk about violence in video games instead. So, um, that was definitely like one of the options. Cause you know, our teacher, our professor had given us like a list of ideas. He's like, here's some ideas. And I remember scrolling through the list and I saw like, oh, sex education. I'm like, that would be a good one. But I was like, no, but you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are trying to teach sex. Um, and, uh, I feel like some of them are great, but then on the other hand, some of them, they're great until they say certain, make certain comments where I'm just like, but why go in that direction? You know, like. One, well, also some of the people who are teaching it have been teaching it for so fucking long that they're not up on, they're, they're teaching from their societal norms, not the societal norms. That's of- true. That's actually, that actually, that's a very valid point, actually. That's very true. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, cool. You may have an open mind, but you know, you're still dealing with your fucking biases. Right. right? Yeah. Like whatever you're. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. And just, you know, depending on where you are in America, 
it could be wildly different. Like, you know, sex ed for me, I remember was like, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't abstinence education. I you know, grew up in suburbs of Chicago and it definitely wasn't abstinence, but boy, it was definitely scared straight. It was like, damn, like but, if but, you have sex, you're going to get AIDS. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> oh like, my God. Like the first time I intentionally had unprotected sex, I freaked out afterwards. Really? Yeah. And boy, I did not communicate why I was freaking out well to my partner, and that really didn't go over well. Damn. See, for me, when I lost my virginity, I was freaking out about the whole pregnancy thing. Like, oh my God, what if I get pregnant? You know what I mean? Like, I would like I like I feel like because I went to a Christian private school my whole life, and I I couldn't even fucking tell you what sex ed was like because it was that unmemorable. You know what I mean? I just remembered being very confused about sex even taking the course. Uh, so that goes to show that like they were not doing it right. You know what I mean? And like when I did lose my virginity, I was like freaking out more about getting pregnant than I was about STDs and you know, all this <laughs> kind of shit. It was just, I don't know. But yeah, I feel like um, that definitely lacks in the country for sure. And I feel like, you know, people want to blame porn, for example, you know, there's still that crusade of people that are like, you know, porn is teaching our kids bad things. But, you know, like if maybe, you know, schools actually taught proper sex education, kids wouldn't be resorting to fucking pornography to learn because as adults, we understand that pornography is entertainment. Not all adults. Not, this is true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> actually, this is true because there are some adults. <laughs> there are some adults that have come to me. And talked about how they tried to learn to do things from watching porn. So you're absolutely right. It's not just kids. But point being is that like, that's the whole thing, right? Like the whole the whole crusade against um, banning porn or stopping porn is because, oh, but the children, you know what I mean? The thing is, it's true. There are children that are using porn to learn about sex. And, um, and obviously they need to understand that that's not where you go to learn sex. But again, if schools were actually giving proper sex education, then maybe we wouldn't be having this issue. Well, and if parents weren't ashamed about sex also. Also, yes, because that's the thing. I think, um, the problem is a lot of parents freak out and it's like, to me, if, if a child, and of course it depends on how old they are, right? Like if they're at a certain age um, and they come to you. It's not even like you coming to them like, hey, let's have a chat. Let's talk about the birds and the bees and all this stuff. You know what I mean? If a child, because this happens a lot where a kid is curious, so they want to talk to their parents about it. Maybe it's a girl wanting to talk to her mom, a boy to his dad, whatever. You know what I mean? I think the problem is when a kid does, is like bold enough, brave enough, whatever, to go up to their parents and be like, hey, mom, can we talk about something for a minute? I think the problem is a lot of parents freak out and they don't know what to do. And so then they're like, just come back to me in five years and we'll talk about it. It's like, well, I mean, I feel like if they're at an age where they're old enough to understand, it's okay to have that conversation with them. Because I feel like if you're, if you're, if you're uh, bold, like brave enough to have that conversation with your child, who's brave enough to ask you questions, then maybe your kid won't be so scared to have an open discussion about it. And then also not be afraid of, other things, you know what I mean? But it also, I can imagine parents are also afraid that like being the first parent on the block to tell their kid honestly about sex is like the first parent to tell their kids that Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> Seriously, because like the kid goes back to school and then starts talking to other kids about it in a frank fashion. Right. And then has that parent then has to hear from other people that may not be comfortable with their kids hearing that Santa ain't real. Yeah. Like it, it's. I mean, I guess it comes down to like the appropriate age of which you would talk to your child. Cause like, obviously if your kid's 10 and they're like, Hey mom, let's have a conversation about, you know, <laughs> what sex, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, what, what is an appropriate age to you? I mean, I think the first time I had sex, that was fifth grade. Seriously. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. yeah we had our first sex in fifth grade and then another one in seventh. See, I didn't have my sex ed until Holy shit, I'm trying to remember if I was in the seventh grade or like if I was in junior high or if I was in high school. I feel like I was in junior high. Oh my God, I can't fucking remember. I can't fucking remember. I, yeah. I feel like I was in junior high when I had sex ed, but now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, was I a freshman in high school? Yeah, because we definitely in the school system, I was in fifth grade, seventh grade and like, the freshman or sophomore year in high school like was 
wasn't just sex ed. It was like, yeah, a more all encompassing thing. Yeah. But a lot of it was like horrible pictures of like the worst HPV, you know, breakouts. Oh my God. See, they never did that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There there was a lot of like, we're not pregnant and you don't want that. (laughs) Yeah. There was, I mean, the pregnancy scare was there too, but it's just like, oh, we're not teaching abstinence, but you know, you're going to run it in. Could get ugly down there. Damn. Ew. Yeah, just like fucking just whole area. Like it, like the worst possible like HPV and her, herpes infections. You, you can, will get herpes yeah, if you have sex. <laughs> yeah. oh, it doesn't matter if you're both virgins, you will get herpes. Oh, as I said, like first time I, I I was, you know, it was a girl I was seeing on the regular. We had hooked up plenty of times and like we were messing around in my bed and she's like, just put it in me. I'm like, oh my. God, was she virgin? No, no. This, I mean, this is as an adult. Like, I didn't have. Un- oh, okay, okay. I, I didn't thought- have. I didn't have unprotected sex to like in my twenties. Like, gotcha. Okay. Intentionally, okay. I, I definitely had some condom breaks. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And definitely the memorable condom breaks like caused a relationship because we were sticking around to see if she got pregnant or not. Oh my god. See, when I lost definitely my virginity, no. <laughs> we were both virgins, so we didn't use protection because it was also like one of those things where it just kind of happened. And then, and like, of course, it lasted like two minutes. So, because, you know, we we're both virgin. He was a virgin. <laughs> and I was like, uh, and then I had a big pregnancy scare where I was like, oh my God. Because like, I'll tell you what, my, my, um, my cousin, okay, she was 17 when she lost her virginity and she got pregnant when she lost her virginity. And I think they even did the pullout method. And like, I'm like, oh my God, that was like, I got. I cannot fucking imagine if I if I would have like had a kid if I would have been pregnant and I think this was when I when I was that age when I was six because I was sixteen when I lost my virginity there was no such thing as the morning after pill nope no plan B so when my cousin when she was seventeen they already had invented plan B and so my mom was all like oh they, if they would have told me because my mom was a nurse who helped deliver babies at the time she now works in a in a prison hospital <laughs> from babies to prison hospital but anyways. My mom was a nurse and she was like, if they would have just told me, I could have given her a plan B. But I mean, you know, that was so long ago. Her kid's like 15 now. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Time fucking flies, bro. Jesus Christ. If I had a child with anyone I was having sex with as a teenager, like, oh, God, my life would be ruined. Yeah, mine would have for sure. Like, I, I mean, I like I'm thinking right now, if I would have gotten pre- if I would have gotten pregnant when I lost my virginity. Oh, my God. That kid would be like over 18. I lost my virginity at 16 also. My kid would be over 21. Yeah, I'm like, my oh my God, yeah, because 16, I'm 37. Wow, I had to do math for a minute there. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Um yeah, my my kid would be 21. Yeah, that. I, I've talked about this on here before. I would have had a 21 year old. Oh my God, that's so weird. <laughs> right? Kid could have gone and gotten drinks if you're still drinking. Oh my God, I would have. Yeah, we've had that joke before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've talked about this on air before, but it got weird for me. Like when I started playing girls' dads in scenes where, like, oh, I legitimately could have fathered you. Yeah. You know, one of, one of my last scenes, because, you know, I quit porn. I always have to mention this because people are very confused when they see me on any podcast or anything. But yeah, I've been retired from porn since 2016. Okay. All right. Now that I got that out of the way, uh, one of my last scenes that I ever shot was a lesbian scene. And um, my scene partner was 19. And I remembered I, at the very least, had to have been, so six years ago, yeah, I had, I had to have been like 30, 30, 31, 32, 31, I think. So I was like, oh, hold up, <laughs> you're 19. So when I started doing porn, you were like a wee little girl when I first started in porn. It's very fucking weird, dude. I was like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've definitely hung out with some people who's like, Oh, there weren't even hair on your genitals when I started in this industry. Yeah. And if you think about it, we're in 2022 right now, which means that people that are legally able to drink were born in uh, 2001. Yep. Yep. It's very strange to me. It super duper is. Very fucking strange to me. We got Um, fucking old. Yeah. I remembered when I, when 2000 or sorry, when 2018 hit, I was like, oh, people that are legally of age to make porn, they were born in 2000. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Now there's people legally in porn that weren't alive when 9-11 happened. 
Yeah. Oh God. We're old. Yeah, we're fucking old. No, I never say old. We're seasoned. We're seasoned. We're not old. We're seasoned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's one of those things like, oh, you weren't born on 9-11. I spent 9-11 in a bar. Jesus Christ. I mean, I was, under, I was underage, but I was. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say, when 9-11 happened, like when 9-11 happened, I was in my English class. And I was a junior in high school. Yeah, I was twenty. No, I was a senior in high school. I was a senior in high school, and I was and I was uh, I was in my English class when that happened. Holy fuck, dude! Yeah, I was twenty and had an interview with Southwest Airlines that they did reschedule. Amazing. Were you in Chi Town? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, 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 and I just rolled over to a bar where my buddy was bartending and just sat and drank pints. Wait, of wait, did you just say that you were supposed to have an interview with an airline? Uh huh. So when that happened, you're like, well, there goes that opportunity. <laughs> well, it, it was hilarious because they like I had a phone interview schedule and they called and like, um, do you mind if we reschedule? I'm like, I was amazed you guys called. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's that's part of the story I did not know. Yep. And then I went to the bar and watched CNN from the bar and drank pints all day. Oh, my God. That's wild, dude. Yeah. And when I tell people, that they're like, how old are you? I'm like, well, I, I was 20. I was drinking underage. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was I was almost of legal drinking age. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was 16. Holy shit. Yeah, I was 16 going on 17. Damn, dude. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yep, it's uh it's fucked up when it's like So where were you on Oh, you weren't even born. That's so weird to me now. I know. It's even especially weird to me now when I'm like, when you like watch like movies and TV shows now with like all these like younger actors. And when you go to look them up, you're like, oh, born in 2007. Oh my God. Like 2007. But it's also crazy to think like, oh, with actors like that, I am old enough to actually be your parents. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's very true. Very, very, very fucking true. My boyfriend's niece was in town um, visiting. She's 14. And um, and uh, and it was funny because I had to take her to the airport and she's an, an, an unaccompanied minor. So I had to take her to, to the gate, had my mask on and um, we're going through security. I'm like, yeah, I'm accompanying a minor. And <laughs> the lady looks at me and she gets in my face and I didn't know what was happening. And she was just like, you look like a minor. And I'm like, what? Because I didn't understand what she said. She's like, you look like a minor. And I'm like, oh, you're so sweet. And then like, I go to the gate and this person goes, are you her sister? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like she's basically my niece. You know what I mean? And, um, and you know, she's 14 and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm 37. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm much older than you. <laughs> like, I know that I have green hair and piercings and I look cool, you know, I, or I try to be, <laughs> I try to look cool, um, but I'm actually old. <laughs> yep, yep. We just live in LA and this is never Neverland. We don't actually have to grow up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can still wear bar shirts and metal shirts into yeah. my 40s yeah. and it's okay. Oh, I, I can't do that signal anymore. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, white supremacist. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to, in the post, put a blur over my hand. Like, oh, wait, can't do that. Can't do that. that yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's true. Because I feel like in L.A., that's more of the norm than, like, say, somewhere in Ohio. Right. You know? Speaking of L.A. shenanigans and dating and all that fun shit, I don't know if you saw, I posted this yesterday, but, like, I think someone was trying to set me up for something no good on a dating app. No, I did not see that. So do tell. I I'm talked about this on the podcast I did last night, but the quick and dirty of it is the conversation in 10 minutes went from like the person claiming they wanted to hook up, what I was doing tonight, where did I live in? Do you live alone? That's creepy if they're like, do you live alone? Right. And that's exactly how they said it. And I responded with, why do you ask? And then they unmatched me. <gasps> did, do you think you're being catfished or do you think they're just being weird? I don't know. I I took it as like, this person's going to set me up to rob me. Actually, that's a good point because I feel like if it was a dude asking a chick that, that's more of like a creepier scenario. Whereas if it's a chick asking a dude that, then like, yeah, probably show up with like 
a bunch of dudes, right. friends, whatever, and then like fucking rob your ass. Right. I so, feel like I'm surprised. You, you know that's had that that's had to have happened. Yeah, right? there was an article about. I, I feel like kid. I feel like I've read something, but you don't really hear about it often. But like I feel like it happens more than you we hear about it. It definitely happens, and like. The part of it that was surprising me after that, like, because I posted about it because I was thought it was kind of novel, was I had multiple female friends be like, oh, roommates are a turnoff to me. I don't date guys with roommates. I've asked that question. I'm like, what? In L.A.? Really? You know, I've seen so many, like, weird shit of people posting that. Like, some of it is, like, our memes, and some of it is, like, people trying to be funny, and some of it people are being Oh, no, no. One, one of them was a female friend in my DMs, and another one was a female friend, like, on my personal Facebook post. Yeah, I feel like that's so weird, especially when if you're living in L.A. and making that comment, because it's like, do you know how much it costs to live in fucking L.A.? Like you do. You live here. Like before I lived alone. I OK, when I broke up with my ex in 2018. Right. And it, the, it just like had dawned on me, like I got my ap my apartment by myself. And I was like, dang, in the, the near 20 years I've been in L.A., I've always ever either lived with a partner or I've had roommates. <laughs> so it's like, that was my first time moving into my own spot. Now, granted, it was a studio because I'm like, if I'm single and I'm by myself, like right. it's all and I your need. And dude moved in not too long after. <laughs> yeah. And then we ended up getting a bigger place because, you know, but, but you're right. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it was a perfect spot for myself because I was single and by myself. So it's like, but me as a woman, I'm like, dude, I've lived with roommates like almost the entire time. I, the majority of my time living in LA, I've had roommates. If not with a partner, I've had roommates whenever I didn't live with a partner. And it's like, same with every dude that I've met. I've even dated dudes that fucking had roommates. So it's like weird to me when people are like, oh, I don't date people that have roommates. Like, well, what? And this is my second LA apartment. I've been in this spot for years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I had a one bedroom in East Hollywood when I first moved to town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a shitty apartment. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a shitty fucking apartment. Oh, yeah, you were there. You picked me up from yeah, it. I well, we were yeah. Apartment yeah, and we were apartment hunting together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you saw my old place. As a woman, wouldn't you be like, huh, this spot, then there's another person here, or my old shitty fucking one bedroom yeah, yeah. in East Hollywood? Like, But I think it's such a weird, like, like such a weird, what's the word I'm looking for? Um... Thing, you know what I mean? Like, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't. It's like at the tip of my tongue. I don't know why I'm brain farting tonight. I apologize. I don't know what's going on. I think I, I just need to sleep. Uh, <laughs> but like, it's like some like a deal breaker. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, well, this, this and this. And also you, you can't have roommates. And I've heard of women actually complaining about that. Where, and I'm like, but you do realize you live in L.A., right? Like, wh what are you looking for exactly? Like, are you just say that what you really want to say and you just want some fucking rich dude that fucking lives like somewhere in the hills by himself? Because, honey, if you're trying to find a dude, you know, like a, a decent guy in L.A., even in West Hollywood, look, like, he's going to have fucking roommates. <laughs> well, I feel like with one of those friends, she just likes to lounge around the apartment naked. True. So I think that's what her discrimination against women is. Like she just. I guess. That, I guess I never. I never put that in, into account because I myself, who have lived with mostly male roommates, um, in the majority of my the two, two decades that I've lived here, I walked around naked, but like it was never a thing. Right. Like, it was never a big deal. So I guess I never really put that into perspective when a woman says, "I hope he doesn't have roommates," but it's like, well, I, I don't know, like. The other friend who slid into my DMs was like, yeah, it's a deal breaker for me. I've directly asked that question. Do you live alone? I'm like, okay, that's weird. But the other friend is like, I know. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Though. There's a different. It's also, I've learned this in psychology, too. Like, it's also in the, the way you phrase this. Oh, no, no. That's if what set me off. There's something different from saying, do you have roommates versus do you live alone? Do you live alone sounds very ominous. Well, and especially... The way it went, because it was like a 10-minute conversation. The whole fucking match to yeah, yeah, unmatch yeah. was like a 10-minute conversation. It was like, Matt, what are you looking for on the site? Oh, I'm, you know, looking to meet these people. Maybe, you know, find someone to take over the world with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. yo, I'm a dude who's probably talking to someone who's being inundated with penises. I got to stand out a little bit. Of so, course. So, no, of so course. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Remotely wacky or funny. For sure. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, what are you looking for? She's like, oh, mostly some casual hookup. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, I'm not opposed to that. Right, right, right. So what are you doing tonight? I'm like, I have a podcast recording. Without skipping a beat, like, where do you live? And I'm like, 
my neighborhood's on my profile. So it's like Hollywood. And that like that initially didn't. It's like, I'm not going to give you my address, bro. (laughs) Right. But it's also like, it doesn't raise red flags for me for someone to be like, what neighborhood are you in? Because no. no. Yeah. It's 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 different when they're like, what neighborhood are you in? Or like, where like whereabouts are you? Yeah. But it was. Where do you live? Was but the, where do you live? It's the I told you it's the phrasing. Well, yeah. Where do you live? Ver, you know, and then and then also, do you live alone? Right, but it was also like I responded with like, I live in Hollywood. You live in downtown LA because that's what her profile. Yeah, said. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, yes. Do you live alone? And I, and I paused. I'm like, uh, do I lie here? Do I do? You know, it would have been interesting if you. Okay, so you said she she unmatched you, right? Did after you I to- said, after I said, why do you ask? So you didn't even answer the question. You nope. just said, why do you ask? It would have been interesting if you would have just outright said, I have a roommate. And then she unmatched you. Because then, I mean, like, I fe- I still feel like either way, either direction, it, it, it's fucking shady as fuck. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Red flag. Red flag. And I don't feel bad about it. That's why I posted because I'm like, yo, stay, stay froggy, people. Yeah. But it, the, the re- response from multiple women were just like, oh, I don't date dudes with roommates that both live in L.A. It's like. But then it comes down to also, but do you ask outright, like, do you live alone or do you ask, do you have roommates? Well, and one of the women said that she does ask, do you live alone? But I'm like, I know, I don't know her well, but I I know her well enough that like the lack of response, like acknowledgement of my responses too, seemed like off. It's like, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I have a podcast recording. There was never a like, oh, oh the, that's cool. That's like, cool. Well, maybe another night. It was immediately on to where do you live? Yeah. So that's that's a red flag to me. Yeah. You, just the whole conversation in itself, like not like not acknowledging your responses just wants to get to the point like, oh, OK, what are you doing tonight? Oh, uh, well, I'm recording a podcast like any normal human being would have been like, oh, that's cool. Well, if you want to hang out like another night, you know what I mean? Right. But to just go into it, well, it's also as a red flag to me for a woman who is trying to get me to host without meeting in a public place first. Yeah. Yeah. Do you always meet your, your, uh, Oh yeah. God, I feel like such a fucking hoe bag. <laughs> well, but Chris, like in a lot of those situations, you were living with multiple. No, teams. you're absolutely right about that. I mean, like not, I mean, not that I like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back on there anytime soon. I was about to say like knock on wood, but like, I guess I'm lucky in that, in all my tramp ages in the past when I was single and just allowing people to come over because even dudes that I would allow to come over, they would straight up be like, um, this is very weird. I'm like, like, aren't you like, they were concerned for me. Like, aren't you concerned? Like, you know, like how you're so trusting and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why should I be concerned about you or something? You know what I mean? But it's like, like I, I've thought about this recently where, and cause I'm very happy in my relationship. Like I, like, this is like, by far the healthiest relationship I've ever been in when I compare it to all my other relationships we fight like once a year like no joke once a year and it's not even like bad you know what I mean because the difference between this relationship and other relationships we have this wonderful thing I like to call communication what a concept right Right. like if and, and this is even very rare but if either of us have an issue and again, I said this is very rare, but if like there's even something like, for example, like, oh, I don't really like the way you said that to me. We actually have a conversation about it. You know what I mean? Um, but we never fight. Like, it's like a once in a year thing. Like, oh, well, there goes our yearly or annual fucking uh, blowout, if you will, which is like not even that dramatic. You know what I mean? Um, and because, you know, people say like, oh, we never fight. Like, no, we legitimately do not fight. Like, it's it's very strange. But like. I'm very content with that. Some people like to thrive off of drama. So like they create drama, but like, I'm no, I'm like very, 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 very happy with my relationship. That's, that's for fucking children. Who's got time for that shit? No. And I, in all, in all honesty, in all honesty, like I feel like I'm at an age too, where like, I just don't have the patience for that fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? So with that being said, I thought about this recently where I was like, man, if for some strange reason we broke up, because like there's no reason for me to feel like we would because right. we're so happy. But you like, found your forever home. I've, I've, yeah, you know, I, I, I can like in in all my confidence can fucking say I feel that way. You know yeah. what I mean? Which I've never felt that way about my like. If you asked me this question with my last relationship, I'd have been like, fuck no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like with all the confidence, I would have been like, no. Um, like I'm waiting for us to break up. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe at the beginning you might have. Right. When right. you two first moved in together, you you were. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're very so, spitting. Well, yeah, very, 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 very spitting. But, um, 
you know, four years, it's like, that's another thing too. Like I've learned now I'm like deterring into another conversation. Let me start with this and then I'll go into my next thing. <laughs> but um, I thought about this recently and I was like, man, if for some reason something happened where we broke up, I don't know why we would, but if we did, like if, I don't know how I would handle dating again, dude, because it was never an issue for me in the past going on these dating apps and stuff. But like with the way the world is so different now, and this goes back to my comment from earlier in the beginning of the podcast where I'm like, people are so sensitive over shit. Like, I just don't know how I could do it. Like, I feel like I feel like I would force myself to try and meet people the old fashioned way because I don't know if I could handle going on a dating app again, because while it was not an issue for me, like it was easy, I guess, for lack of a better word. But I, I was trying to imagine myself going back on a dating app. And I think it comes down to like talking to our single friends. When I talk to our single friends who are on these dating apps, I'm like, man, I just don't know if I could do that again. Oh, I'll tell you firsthand, at least as a, you know, white cis middle-aged male who is not filthy rich, it sucks. Yeah, I just feel like, yeah, it's easy to get laid as a woman, you know what I mean? But like, I feel like if I wanted to be in a relationship again... Or even, even, even hooking up. I just don't know if I could do it. Like, just hearing our single friends talking about, like, all the different issues that they're having. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know if I could do, like, are people like that on dating apps? Is it just the people you're swiping on? Like, like our female friends. I'm like, is it you or is it the people, the guys you're choosing? Probably a little both. A little bit of both. You know what I mean? And then, like, and then our guy friends that are having issues. I'm like, well, you know, women in L.A. are fucking weird. So. Well, I also... Make sure to see the trash out early. Like all the podcast stuff is very fucking prominent on my profile. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, okay. I very regularly will match with people, have like one word exchange, and then like they'll ask you, like, because you know, most people are just swiping, like, oh, you're cute, you're cute, you're yeah, cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they actually go read my fucking profile. And they're like, and then they unmatch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it happens all the time. I had a you know, woman earlier this week, it's like, Started striking up the conversation. I got the te- like the email, like so and so has responded. I went to respond unmatched. I'm like, oh, she looked at my profile. Mm, yeah. <laughs> she she went and clicked the link. That's funny. That's really funny. I mean, but I would rather the trash see itself out on that front. No, that's true because it kind of skips all the bullshit, right? Yeah, like, like I'm not gonna stop having active sex workers come over to my apartment to, to be on podcasts. Like that's just not yeah gonna stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you have a problem with that. See, I think my issue, it would maybe it would be different if, if like I wasn't a former sex worker, because I think my big now that I'm thinking about it, my biggest problem on even being on these dating apps is that a lot of the because you know I'd go on there under my real name, I would be Frankie, not Annie, and a lot of times dudes would either withhold that they knew who I was until we met in person, or would just write outright in the message be like, oh yeah, I know who you are, Annie Cruz. You know what I mean? And then it would just get weird. And then like, you know, I've had more bad experiences than good on being on those dating apps. Um, I mean, granted, you know, I've I obviously met my boyfriend on one of them. But like when I look at all my my tra- my past tramp pages, it's like I think my biggest obstacle was people getting over the fact that I used to do porn. Yeah. Because I remembered when I started dating a dude and this was before my boyfriend. Now, this was like this was even this was six years ago, six years ago. I started dating this dude and he was the biggest fanboy, but he like hit it well. But then I realized, oh no, you're a fan. And he even openly admitted it to me. He was just like, yeah, I was a fan of yours, da, 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 whatever. But then it became an issue of him being very insecure and then admitted to me verbally that I'm not going to lie. I think I just like the novelty of being with you because of who you are. And I was like, well, we're done here. <laughs> you know what I mean? As like, you should be. Like, you know, like, I, I, I'm i not going to be with someone just because, like, oh, I'm dating Annie Cruz. But then you're also insecure and think that I'm fucking everything that moves. Because here's the thing. Like, I know that on eight years of radio and also doing this podcast and whatever other podcast that I've done and, and, like, guest spots, whatever, I'm very, very candid with my sexcapades. Everybody knows that. And as candid as I am about my sexcapades and how open-minded I am sexually or how sexually adventurous, I, whatever, everything that you want to want to list of me being open sexually, right? No matter how open I am, when I am, and, and granted, I've had non-monogamous relationships, but I've also had monogamous relationships. But when it comes to my monogamous relationships specifically, I'm a very loyal person. And I think a lot of times 
people that I have dated, whether casually or seriously in the past, a lot of times they can't see past that. And it's like, just like with this guy that I'm talking about, his whole thing was, I just feel like when we're not together, you're like probably fucking other people. And it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> well, have a good life. Yeah, uh, cool, man. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have trust, you have nothing. Yeah. yeah. If there's no trust, then there's nothing. And so like, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. But also I think the bigger issue is that people just can't look past that. Like, oh, I just only see you as Annie Cruz and not as Frankie. And then, then just becomes a, you know, it just becomes a whirlwind of shit. And I think the reason why I love my boyfriend so much is because um, obviously he's had people come to him like, oh, your girlfriend, did you know? Well, yeah, no shit. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course I know. But I've also had people like other women specifically that like either he's dated in the past or, um, you know, like hooked up with whatever that would that like one specific that I'm speaking of um, specifically, she um, was telling him, like, I just don't know how you could date her, like was basically bad mouthing me. And he actually defended me. And when I look at past relationships, no one would have defended me the way he had. And it's like, you know, to to stick up for someone that that's to me, that's real. You know? Yeah. Why, why would you not stick up for your partner in that situation? Oh, you'd be surprised at people that have not stuck up for me. I'm like, are you fucking serious? So and, and, and not just to anybody, but to people that he's like dated before, like he, you know, like some people would be like, oh, I'm kind of feeling weird about talking about this with someone that I used to have a relationship with or someone that I used to date or whatever. You know what I mean? But no, he like outright was all like, no, she's a good person. And, da, 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 da. and it's like, hey, she's a good person. She makes me happy. Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's what's important. You know what I mean? Like a lot of a lot of time. Like, I think that was when I realized like, OK, like. Like, this is it, because I've never had someone back me up like that, like the way he has. Well, and that's fucked that no one has. In the no, it's true. When I look back at my old relationships, like, you didn't have my back. Like, yep. it's like, especially because of I already take enough bullshit from people. Because, and like, it's not like I announced to his friends or, you know, the whole world. It just word gets around. Like, You're like, like you weren't like, go to anycruise.com, spend $10 a month. Yeah, like <laughs> seriously. And like, it was just one of those things where she found out from somebody else and like, because people talk, you know what I mean? They just happen to find out or they stumble upon my, like, usually it's because they found my social media. Right. They find my social media and then they put two and two together or someone else tells them something, supposedly. I mean, you just have to do a quick Google after. You exactly. Find the social. And so, well, because her in this case, she was all like, oh, yeah, you know, I heard. Like, yeah, sure you did. You sure you didn't like, I know every chick in L.A. and they like to Googly Google stuff and like, you know, like stalk people. So I'm sure that's what really happened. But um, the point being is that's, you know, that's what really that meant a lot to me because I've never had anyone have my back like that before. And I think that's very, very important. I also, on top of not being judgmental, because I think the biggest thing that I have had even with like, not so much the people that I casually dated, like hookups, because hookups were just hookups. It was whatever. whatever. And I probably only saw them one time, (laughs) like whatever, you know what I mean? But like the dudes that I actually dated, I never had this issue with women. It's so, it's so different with women. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is, but with men, like, the, more often than not, a lot of the guys that I dated would use that against me. You know, like, oh, well, you're just a whore or whatever. And it's just, and it's like, it's shitty. Well, and that's their own fragile fucking ego. Exactly. Exactly. So. Because it's a, such a weird, weird thing that's still like kind of instilled in people. And it's instilled through fucking, you know, me, just entertainment. Yeah. Not, not just societal norms, but entertainment. Like, Oh, for sure. Like, oh. She's promiscuous, so she's bad. But you're a fucking pimp if you fucking bang. Her. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's so, just, that's always been like that, and it hasn't changed. Yeah, it has that, not changed. But that double standard gets you know presented in popular media all over. Oh the place. yeah, even with like with the celebrity. I don't follow celebrity gossip, but I remember something happened somewhere. I couldn't tell you what because, I, like I said, I don't pay attention to that shit. But I remember it was like the chick did something but then the the dude did something the same exact thing but like nobody gave him shit for it but they gave her shit for it so it's 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 always going to be like that man it sucks but yeah and dudes unfortunately like fragile ego like yeah like oh, 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 i can't deal with it like every partner you ever hook up with is going to have had other partners hopefully all right. Hopefully. <laughs> the shit is not climbing Everest. Yeah. You're not planting a fucking flag. Yeah. You're not first. You're probably not even going to be the last. Yeah. <laughs> like, get the fuck over it. Yeah. Be yeah. happy. They're here now. Yeah. Like. It's true. And if you're down, be down. If you're not, get the fuck out. Yeah. Because, yeah. 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 But the fact that, like, 
these people claim that they were fucking down and didn't have your back. This fucking garbage. Yeah, that's the thing. Just like with the dude that was like, oh, it was more of a novelty for me. Like, even before he said that to me, like, because obviously, you know, I dropped him after that. But like before that, it was like I remembered he had like an ex or a best a female best friend or something, someone that he used to hook up with or whatever, someone who like was like, oh, I think I know who it is that you're dating or whatever. And then like bad mouthed me. And then it was a similar fucking thing. But then like. It wasn't so much like I'm going to trash her back or agree with her. It was more like. No, it was more like agreeing. Sorry, it's not like he was going to like vocalize it, but like almost kind of agree without agreeing, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, you know. And I was like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, the proper response is like, are you dating so and so who's a performer? Like, yeah, jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's your fucking problem? Yeah, man. So it's like, for, like sometimes, I mean, for the longest time, I was like, I'm just going to like change my name and uh, d delete all my social media links and just like live somewhere in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I'm going to move to Alaska. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> hopefully nobody recognizes me there. You know what I mean? Like, it's so fucked up, dude. It is. And what you're going through and what you have gone through is one of the pitfalls, like, that almost every female fucking performer has gone oh, through. Oh, absolutely. I hear so many horror stories from, you know, my fellow peers of the past. And like, it's awful. It's fucking awful. It sucks because, and it sucks when I hear stories of people that like, it's ha currently happening to them. And then they st still are staying with their partner because they just can't leave them. And it's just like, why? Like, you don't deserve to be treated that way. You know? Codependency issues. Oh, that's, yeah. that's another thing too. Codependency issues. Don't even get me started on that topic because, oh my God, I cannot, if there's one thing I can't stand is, is like being friends with other couples that are like codependent on each other. And then like having one person bitch about their partner to me and then have the other person bitch about them. And then it, and it's like, okay, you both are talking shit about each other to me. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Just because you two are institutionalized, figure it out. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Just break up with each other, you know what I mean? Like, just do it. Oh, but we've been together for, like, ten years. I, who gives a fuck? Just, it's, Guess it's, what? It's, You're wasting your finite time on this planet. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you've already made a mistake that you should continue to make the same mistake. And that's another thing, too, okay? If I can just go on a rant for a second. Like, all my past relationships, when I've ended them, it's it. It's done. I don't, I don't dwell on it. I don't cry about it. I don't, like, when I'm done with you... That's it. Like, cool. Even if, like, we're Amit, because there's a lot of exes. There's only a couple of exes that I, like, if I saw them, like, I would probably, like, call the cops or get the cops called on me because, like, what the fuck are you doing here in my line of sight? <laughs> but um, for the most part, a lot of my exes were amicable with each other. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's no bad blood. We're, we're friendly. You know what I mean? Talk every once in a while, whatever. But, um, like the exes that I don't speak to, like when I break up with you and that's it, dunzo. And like, I have a lot of friends that are like, oh, I can't get over him or her. And like, how do I move on from this? And it's like, dude, get over it. Move on. You're hot. You could have anybody you fucking want. Move on. Is it that hard? Like, am I being heartless? Because like, I, I just feel like when I end a relationship, it's very easy for me to be like, on to the next. Well, I, I think it's a couple things. One, there as more and more time separates from the relationship and where they're currently at, and if they had continued disappointment in dating, they just remember the good times. Yeah. From that relationship versus like, oh yeah, there's a reason we fucking broke up. You know what's what's funny that you say that? Because when I think of like my relationships that ended, um, and I've said this many times before, how a lot of the good memories get so outweighed by the bad memories that like, if you asked me to list a good memory from like one of my exes that I fucking can't stand, I probably couldn't tell you because I've suppressed all those memories because there's just so much negative instead of positive. And I was just talking about this with somebody not too long ago where it's like, yeah, for some reason when I like, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about anything happy because after I've broken up with them, all I think about is the bad. But in that situation, your mindset is you're the wronged party, that you ended it. Where some of these friends of yours may not, they may have wanted to still be in that relationship. 
No, this is true. This is that's actually very, very true. But I mean, like, even if they did, if they did the breaking up, they still. But it's you're right. They they still secretly want to be in that relationship. Still, they're like, right. oh, I wish I didn't break up with him and blah blah. Right, because it was a, a snap reaction to something that happened in yeah. possible shit communication. Right, right, right. Or and then they're just you know thinking of the good times and like you know the initial getting to know someone depending on who you are fucking blows. Well, that's why I was saying I was like, man, I cannot imagine like if if my boyfriend and I broke up like. I just don't know. Like that's I. That was one of the things. M- more than just having to like, how do I date? Do I go on dating apps? Do I go meet people in real life? Like you know, like back in the old, like in the olden times, the old fashioned way. My whole thing was beyond that. Was just like you said. It's like, oh, fuck. I couldn't imagine having to do the whole like rigmarole of like. So, what do you like to do? Right. Do we have cool. anything in common? <laughs> what kind of music do you like? Oh, okay, cool. Um, what kind of movie? You know what I mean? Like, I just I, like thinking about that. I'm like, oh my god, I would rather shoot myself in the foot than have to like. Fucking, <laughs> like, you do know? you have any major red flags I have to pick out? Yeah, right like, away? are you a serial killer? Can we just skip all the bullshit? Are you a serial killer? Do you like? Are you a cannibal? Do you like to? Do you have like a secret fetish for like cutting people's fingers off and eating them? Are you vegan? <laughs> you know, like then, you know, number three there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that. I feel like that would probably be the the biggest nightmare for me in, in, in like having to date again is to have having to do that. Oh, believe me, it sucks. Because. Yeah, I give hats to you, sir, because I don't know if I could do that again. I mean, this is why I primarily just hook up with people and occasionally like stick around post hookup. Yeah, I'm like it's like oh well, we rub genitals successfully. Yeah, you like to rub I mean, successfully? I think about all my all my tramp pages where I did that, and I'm like, I mean, I guess I could always do that again. But then it's like, I think the last tramp page that I had, I got bored. I got so fucking bored that I was like, oh my god, I think it lo- it like lost its um, appeal. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know what it was. It just kind of lost its appeal. But man. Yeah. Yeah. Last time I went out on like a date date and like halfway through it, I'm just like, yep, this is not where I want to be. Like, yeah. Like it was just like, oh, yeah. Have you ever like walked out on a date when it wasn't working out? No, but I, I've made. I've never like directly walked out, but I've definitely like done everything in my power not to extend it. See, my my best friend's an ass. <laughs> He like, he told me the story because he's older too. Like he's old. He's like four years older than me. So yeah, he's like 42. He, um, or he's going to be 42. Oh my God, his birthday's coming up. Anyways, he um was telling me because he, he moves around a lot for work. And I think he was in, of all fucking places, I think North Dakota when this, ha- this incident happened. So like North Dakota, I think you can imagine what the, what the scene is like on uh, Tinder out there. <laughs> So he um, he said that uh, he matched with someone and then he took her out to dinner. But like it wasn't even her looks that was the problem. He said that it was like they clashed per- like personality wise that he was like, I-, I cannot sit here at- through an entire dinner with this chick. So he like excused himself to the bathroom and then just never came back. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. But I think I don't think they had ordered yet. I think it was one of those things where he's like, maybe if I just sneak out. That's rough that you're taking off before fucking appetizers. And yeah, I don't, I don't I can't remember. I just remembered him saying I'm like, oh, my God, because I mean, it would have been fucked up if like he left her with the <laughs> bill. Yeah, That would have been super fucked but up. But I, th- I think I remember him saying that, like, he didn't know what to do. So he was just like, I'm just going to go to the bathroom and not come back. And then maybe she'll figure it out and leave. <laughs> Same. So I don't know. I do this for a living. I, I can ride out an hour long conversation yeah. with pretty much anybody. Yeah. I mean, like, because the worst that could happen is you, you're like, OK, I'm just never going to call this bitch back. Right. I'm never going to call you again. I have material for next week's show. Yeah. See that? There you go. See, at least you see if I still had my radio show and I was single, I could have a lot of material because I used to talk about the bad dates that would happen. And that was fun. But like now I'm like. Oh, man, I have no outlet to talk about that. If I were single, that is, you know what I mean? And to, to talk about the, because, yeah. It's a, it's a wild time. And, and like, especially with the pandemic on, it's just like, I've kind of been limited to dating sites. And that sucks. Because I was going to ask you that next, because that was another thing. When the pandemic hit, I was like, man, I don't know what I would have done if I was single. Because. A lot of masturbation. Because, like whole lot oh yeah because you know me when i'm single whatever you know what i mean like i am i have no problem like meeting people and stuff like that but when the pandemic hit i was like 
whoa, if I was single and I kept trying to f do these scenarios in my head of like, what would I have done? Like, would I have just masturbated a lot? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And I feel like that probably would have, I probably would have just masturbated, masturbated a lot. I, I literally spent time with, over the course of the pandemic, like two, three girls, like, and all of them were people I knew pre-pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, these were like not random. random they were not strangers. random, random. Yeah, 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 but it was yeah. just like, every time post nut, it was like, I you just, know, was it worth dying over this nut? I guess I feel like maybe that's probably would have happened. I, I I don't even know why I didn't put that into perspective that like, or like, um, like considered that, you know what I mean? I, I guess if I was single when the pandemic hit, I probably would have just talked to people that I knew already because I will say this when the pandemic hit, I knew that people were lonely because people were people that I, okay. There was this one guy. I didn't even hook up with him. Okay. This was a dude that I never hooked up with, but we hung out. We hung out one time, one time in like 2014 or something. Like I, I remembered, I was like, whoa, like, cause he hit me up, I think on Instagram first. And then like, I never use WhatsApp and I forgot that like we were friends on there and he had messaged me on WhatsApp and, and he was like, Hey, how's the pandemic treating you? And I'm like, Oh my God, this dude must be single and lonely. <laughs> cause like, Bro, I haven't, like, it would be one thing if we were, like, communicating. I had not talked to this dude since, like, 2014. So I was like, okay, yeah, they're really fucking, and, you know, of course, I'd had, like, I'd, like, other dudes, like, hit me up, but I ignored them. I was like, whatever, like, uh, obviously, I know why you're hitting me up. Yeah. I well, it ain't happening, bro. <laughs> I definitely did not shoot my shot like that. Like, I didn't hit up anyone. Yeah, like dudes were bold. I was like, and I think the reason why they were bold is because it's me. No, I, I think that they're playing a numbers game. They're just like, yeah, like, like, oh, hey, what's up? No, dude. <laughs> like, right. On to the next. Go ahead. Check me off on your list. Yeah. Fine. It was just yeah. like, I'm not hitting up anybody. Like, I haven't had any communication with just be like, yo, how's life? Like, I'm just not. not yeah, not. no, because that's what they were they're like. Hey, what's up? And I'm like, you know, I'm not stupid. It's been like eight years since we've talked. Not horny and lonely enough, bro. Yeah. Not, not yeah. horny and lonely enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, so yeah, I, I feel like maybe if I was single, I probably would have. I'm sure if someone hit me up and it was someone, because here's the thing: of the dudes that hit me up, were dudes that I did not care for at all. Right, like you hadn't fucked them in the first place. Yeah, and one of them I never fucked in the first place. The other one, I don't even think I even fucked the other. I think these were all dudes that were like just trying to shoot their shot, and I'm like, no, bro. But um, yeah, especially the one dude that I didn't even have sex with. I'm like, you must be really desperate to be hitting up someone that you hung out with one time. Well, at the time it was six years because it was 2014. This was 2020, like six years ago. Yeah. So what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how life would have been like, but. Um, Wasn't fun. It was not. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have had fun. I don't think I would have had fun at all. No, it was, it was not fun. It was not. Yeah, fun. I don't think I would have enjoyed myself, man. Yeah, it was not fun. Yeah, I, I'm just happy that like the ex girlfriend that I had told to you know get out of my life in February of 2020, I stayed strong and did not contact. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally in February of 2020, be like, that's some good self control there. Like, Slender. hey, we're toxic for each other. I hope you have a good life, and we need to never need to speak again. <laughs> wow. Okay. And um, yep, been two years and still have not reached out. And I'm like, damn, good for you. Yeah. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, I have these little slivers of self-control. Every once in a while, just once mm -hmm. in a blue moon. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Just, just once in a while. No, but I mean that that not to delve on that too much. But that one, that one was definitely like a oh, so much time passed. It was like all rose-colored glasses until we hung out again. Like oh yeah, I remember this thing you used to do that horribly sucked. See, you know, it's funny that you say rose-colored glasses because what I forgot to mention earlier when I was like, oh, we'll go into that later because I was trying to deter from one topic to the next. One of my favorite topics that I learned in um, biological psychology uh, from two semesters ago was dopamine. Because, you know, dopamine, it's a neurotransmitter in your brain. That, I like it lots. Yes, it like, you know, sends a transmission to your brain on the reward system. And then, you know, for example, you play video games, you uh, go shopping, you have sex. All you of these drink. things. You, yeah, you drink. Yeah. It, give you, it gives you dopamine, right? Now, when it comes to... It explains my lifestyle. Well, when it comes to relationships, <laughs> this is what I found very, very interesting um, when our professor gave the lecture on dopamine. Because when you think about a relationship that you've been in, 
the first seven months is like pure bliss, right? Because you have those rose colored glasses and you're like, I'm so in love and you have the butterfly feeling and you're like, oh my God. But after seven months, that feeling starts to slowly subside. But it's not until the two year mark that you become complacent and you're like, oh, okay. And then if, if, the, if the love fades after the two-year mark, you start to find somebody else. Now, what's interesting about learning this lesson, and why are you laughing? What's so funny? Go ahead. Tell me. I've never had a relationship last seven months. Last seven months? Nope. Well, what I was going to say, what I was going to say, what I found very interesting about, about uh, this lecture is that when I, I had, like, I was so interested and intrigued by this topic that I wrote on a piece of paper all of my serious relationship, my long, my serious long-term relationships, right? And I looked at all of them and I put how long I had been with each partner. Most majority of my relationships didn't go past two years. Some only lasted a year and a half um, with my longest relationship being five years and this current relationship having been four. Now, my five year relationship, we amicably split because it was like it got to a point where we we also had an open relationship. So it was not conventional in any by any means. And I think it was one of those things where it just kind of faded out because of that. And like, as much as I don't want to admit, like I had anything to do with that, it was be because he, in his words, he was like, I want to make you free. Cause I don't, I think he really secretly did not like being in an open relationship with me, especially because he had like, he could do whatever he wanted, but he wouldn't. He was like, I only, I don't feel comfortable unless you're there. So like we had threesomes and foursomes and stuff like that, but like he would never, I was like, oh, my girlfriend wants to fuck you. Like, like he he would he was in a band, so he would go on tour. So he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be in San Francisco. And I'm from up north." So I was like, "Oh, my my girlfriend, my ex girlfriend that I was in a li like a living relationship with, like the first girlfriend that I was in love with." I was like, "We shared everything together." So I was like, "Hey, my ex girlfriend wants to fuck you. Like, you should hit her up." Gave him the fucking green light, planned it with her and everything, and then he fucking chickened out and was like, "I just didn't feel comfortable." So that was kind of like the basis of our relationship. And so like we were together for five years, but at the end he was just like, it was just like an amicable thing. Like, oh, you know, like let's just be friends. And we're still friends to this day. But um, when I looked at my past relationships, like beyond that, I'm like, wow, two years, two years, year and a half. And, I'm, and when I look also look at the specifics to those relationships, I also got bored after two years and was like, time to go. You know what I mean? So I feel like... Um, when I, you know, when I'm looking at my current relationship, like we've been together for four years and it's like so different compared to my other, I'm like, oh, it must be real, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's interesting. The whole dopamine thing, you know, Se uh, first seven months, pure bliss, but then. I, I love that you just illustrated scientifically that I'm just a dopamine junkie. Yeah. <laughs> like Nothing wrong with that, but like. It's like, oh, the dopamine starting to slow down. Uh, Matt's out. Well, and, that, and that's what it is too. I, like, I thought that was so fascinating when she, when, <laughs> when she gave the lecture specific to that. She was like, when you look at relationships, man, first seven months it's all it's all fucking fantastic it's wonderful you feel great you, you just you love that person whatever but then after seven months it starts to kind of slowly fade and then you are no longer getting the dopamine that you crave but then usually at the two-year mark that's when you really know that like you've really bonded yeah and it's like at two years it's either oh i don't think i'm in love with you anymore or if it's real like, oh, I still feel the same way. Like, when I look at my boyfriend now, I still feel the same way about him I did two years ago, even when we first, like, even in three years ago, you know what I mean? So it's like, when I look at my other relationships, I can, like, with confidence be like, oh, yeah, I remembered, like, year and a half in, two, two year mark, I was like, no, fuck this dude, I'm done. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So... It's oh. very interesting. Dopamine, man. I love the science has just backed up my uh, my claim of being a professional honeymoon. It's funny. Like seven months? Really? Like seven months? You're like, up. Like, oh, that's it. Six and a half like or so. Yeah. 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 That, so, yeah, you're just a dopamine junkie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like I, I've referred to myself in the past as a professional honeymooner. Like the the honeymoon phase is over. I'm out. And that's it. Because that, that's, that's actually another word that she was saying. Like, yeah, it's like the honeymoon. Phase. That's exactly what my professor said. She said, first seven months is more like the honeymoon phase of the relationship where you're like so in love and this and that and da, da, da. So, yeah, you're like a dopamine junkie when it comes to relationships. And a surprise to no one. Yeah. Like, huh. Wait a minute. You're you're really bad about delayed gratification you love video games drinking shitty food adventuring hmm, no couldn't be a dopamine junkie <laughs> yeah. not at all yeah 
Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. That's really funny. I'm glad we I'm glad we uh we discovered this about you. <laughs> I mean I think we already knew. I think we we're just quantifying it in a scientific method. Now I'm glad we we confirmed it scientifically. Let me rephrase. Yeah. There's science behind my bad behavior. Ladies, it wasn't you, it wasn't personal. It's my brain chemistry. Yeah, it is. It's all up here, man. All like, in there. You gotta figure out a way to make my dopamine fire better. Oh shit. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Shout someone's gotta be willing to anyways, I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to call last call on this motherfucker. We've been doing- oh shit! What is it already? Damn! We always just kind of talk and talk and talk and talk yep, and talk. Yep, yep. And according to our former iTunes ratings, sometimes we don't even let the guests talk. <laughs> really? <laughs> like one of them. Oh my god, damn you, Slayer! And I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, there was. I'll tell you the episode off air, but like there was, there's definitely like an old school rating where like. They never, never even let the guests talk. Oh my god! I think I actually remember that now. <laughs> yeah. But hey, it's always a pleasure. You're always welcome to come back home. It's good to be back, dude. I'm so happy to be back. I finally have time to breathe. Right? You caught me like literally just as spring break's about to start. I was like, okay, because we were I was supposed to come last week, remember? Yep. And then I was like, dude, I have my final speech that I have I'm late on doing. So yeah. So yeah, I'm happy to be back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, far from upset about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I appreciate you for, you know, understanding. Yeah, yeah, of course. But where can they find you on the things, you know? Because you you are doing some work in production these days too that we didn't yes. talk about at all. So like I I work for a uh, I do operations and admin work for um two uh, uh film distribution companies Terror Films Global Digital Releasing. We put out a lot of um, horror films. Some of you might have even heard of them. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Hell House or uh, the Taking of Deborah Logan. Those are our two of our films that we uh, yeah that we've put out there. But um, yeah, so I work for that company. Um, you can find me at AnnieCruz.com. If you click on social, you'll find all of my links. I have way too many to list, but my Twitch is on there, my my Twitter, my Instagram, because I have so many Instagram pages. They're all at AnnieCruz.com. So just go there, check it out. And um, now that I'm going to be on spring break, I may or may not stream. I don't know, but you can find that at MissFrankie.tv. That's M-I-S-S-F-R-A-N-K-I-E.tv. Fuck Yeah. And as always, you can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F and Slayer on Facebook, twitch.tv slash Matt F and Slayer for my streams, which I'm currently neglecting to do this podcast. You can find the Patreon at patreon.com slash Matt Slayer. You can find the podcast at and now we drink and now we drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. Cheers, bitches.